What's happening? This is John Sue, just slabbering. I'm joined today by a very, very special guest. This is Chris Crooks. Thank you, man. The owner of White Dragon Tattoo. That's it. And founder of Dragon Claw Whiskey. Yep. Absolute legend, bro. Thanks it's an for having me, man. Thank you. Have. Today it's sponsored by the clothing line. What's this clothing line called, OJ? Garretta. So this is them there. They didn't have any in my size though, so we're also <laughs> sponsored by Adidas. Or, <laughs> or as you like to say, Adidas. Don't you, do you say Adidas? Adidas, yeah. See, I say Adidas. Oh, is it Adidas? Well, I know. I, I grew up in Manchester, bro, so I say Adidas. Adidas. What do you say? Adidas. Adidas. What do you Adidas. say? I say we'll do different accents. Adidas. Uh, yes, <laughs> you just you spread your bets. Yeah, just exactly. cover all angles. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, listen. It's not sponsored by Adidas or Adidas. Sponsored by Coretta and all the swag that we've got as well, and the John Sue bars, and the Buzz Lightyear, all the swag. You know how we do. So, brother, it's an honour to have you on. It truly is. No, seriously, thanks for having me, man. Bro, you're um, more than welcome. I'm very excited about what we're going to talk about. Bro, it's called just slabbering. <laughs> we just slabber on here. But first of all, I want to know about you, my bro. So you're probably Northern Ireland's most well-known, celebrated tattoo artist. That's a fact. Like, um, I, funny enough, I was at a wee show there. I was doing a show. What was the show? It was at Hot Bar. It was at um, Oh Yeah Center. What show was it? It was the Hotbox Hip Hop Night. Yeah. And um, I met a fella who was there and he says to me, um, no, it wasn't, it was the T Mike show. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It was the T Mike show. Yeah. And um, this tattoo artist come over to me and he says, um, I I'm a friend of your cousin's. And I says, no, no, he didn't. He goes, um, my mate knows you, my cousin knows you. And I says, who's your cousin? And he says, uh, Colin Young. And I looked at him and says, that's my second cousin. Yeah. And then he goes, oh, so we're related maybe? And I says, I don't know. And then he goes, well, I'm a tattoo artist from um, Ballymena. Right, okay. And he says, I'd love to tattoo you and all, you know? And I says, well, you're my, my second cousin's cousin. So let's do it then. So um, he's called Dan Thomas. Okay, yeah. But, okay, I went up, name, yeah. but I went up and he tattooed me and all that a couple of weeks ago. But he said to me, my biggest inspiration is Chris Crooks. Oh, super. That's what he said. And all he like, held you in high, high esteem. Even now, when I posted up the photo, yeah. he, he was the first one reacted, went, wow. Well, that's cool. Yeah, no. I mean, it's, I think... You don't really ever realise it yourself. Do you know what I mean? Same with you with music. You don't really, you just do what you're doing. Yes. And then someday somebody says something like that and you sort of, it definitely makes you feel, it feels good because you know you're doing something right. Of course. But it's certainly not something that you like, you want to like get too full yourself over the head of. Of you course. Know? Well, that's, I think that's a Northern Ireland thing in yeah. general. You'd like to stay nice and grounded, you know. Well, you, you need to or someone's going <laughs> to quite happily <laughs> swipe you down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like whack-a-mole if, if you raise up above anything, you know. Yeah. But what did you get done? I got Popeye. Oh, very good. I got Popeye done. So um, Popeye was um, created in 1929, the same year that my granddaughter was born. All right. And, um, and my album, The Troubles, which we're going to give you today, um, the second song on The Troubles is all about my great granda and my granda. Yeah, that's what you were saying. My granda was born in 1929 and he was like golden gloves in the army and all, you with me? Yeah, yeah. He just looked like Popeye and got on like he always smoked and all, you yeah. with me? And he was yeah. hard as nails, like you with me? He could knock out guys three times his size and all. So I loved Popeye and then my uncle, my uncle Billy, he was, um, I like recorded an EP with him and all. He was like Northern Ireland's Johnny Cash. Right, okay. He wanted to hear the singing, like he was incredible. Yeah. And um, I'd done an EP with him, but he had Popeye tattooed on him. And then he died last year on the 12th of July. No way. My uncle Billy died on the 12th of July, eh? But, um, yeah. But I think, I think grandparents are like, my grandfathers were a massive inspiration as well. I don't know what it is about your grandfathers. They're sort of like, because I think they're just so much older than you and they just look like real men's men. Yeah, they were. And they don't fuck about at all. There's something you know. special about the old school. Yeah, no, there definitely is. You know, even like um, my girlfriend there, I just went to her um, great-grandfather's funeral. Mm -hmm. I met him there just before he died, and I've seen a photo of him, him and his mates, and they were all stood there in their suits, you know, and like, yeah, yeah. it was like the 30s or the, like, mid-30s or something, there were cigars, and, you know, stood there, and it was just like, yeah. like, like oh, different style. Of... Do you, do, do, I don't know about you, but I always wondered, when does that happen in life? Do you, when do you start wearing a three-piece suit? 
Um, but you don't know, but like if you, you know, when your grand is always rocking around in a wee waistcoat every day and a tie. Yep. And I used to think, does that happen at some point? You consciously go after to wear a suit now? Not now. No, not, not now, because my dad never wore three feet Exactly. Suit, but, it, like, but it was the old school. Yeah. So this is what I mean. So back in that day, like that's what all men wore. Yeah. They all wore a good suit and they all walked about. It's like a, a, a there's even some like churches that you have to wear a suit or they don't think you're a Christian. Oh, yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, that's true, I yeah. went to some with my dad and I would walk in just wearing this and then they'd look at me and go, oh, do you know Jesus? And yeah, yeah, thinking, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't be asking me if I walked in with a suit and tie on. They yeah. would assume I would, you know what I mean? And, and it's weird, those type of, certainly religion, they have these rules because it, it's not in the Ten Commandments. Yeah. You must wear a three-piece suit to church. Yeah, but, exactly. But somehow these things become like yeah, sort exactly. of part of the dogma, if that's the right Yeah, yeah, of course. No, yeah. definitely is. I mean, imagine you went to a church and then, you know, the pastor stood up wearing a tracksuit it would throw people off yeah you well I, I, mean? I i grew up going to church and right. i remember it was like proper fire and brimstone and my parents were missionaries so we traveled like around the world and whatnot and in latter days like i certainly you know don't want to break people's heart some family members heart here but that that, that ship was like whew, yeah. off it goes but in latter days i remember going to a couple of like modern church services and the pastors were jumping around like s club seven like that we headsets on and obviously in an absolute bid to appeal to a younger generation, but it did seem sort of like a bit contrived or something, you know. Bro, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, so was born again Christian? For me? Your family? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, yeah they were Christians. Yeah, so and they were missionaries? Missionaries, yeah. And where did you go? We left, um, I was born here, and we went to um, England for a while, then America where they studied in like a boot camp. So they were basically training to go into jungle environments so we, then we went to Papua New Guinea Whoa. and I was in Papua New Guinea for I don't know maybe two three years uh, how old were you in Papua um, New Guinea I remember my seventh birthday was there photographs with the seventh birthday cake wow and I think it came back here around primary three or four three in it right wow. now I think. and have you got memories of Papua New Guinea there I do have memories but it's hard to know whether they're real or they're backed up by photographs you no, know, of course. But and sometimes tr photographs trigger them. Well, they definitely trigger, but even as I'm telling you this now, I think, fuck, did that actually happen? Because like, yeah. as you get older, some things become so abstract from when you're young. Of course. And yeah, I do. I certainly remember really vivid things, like smells. Um, and whenever I was there, it was part of an American mission. So all the stuff that I was learning in school wouldn't have been what you did here. It would have been like Dr. Seuss and Bernstein Burrs and all that type of stuff. And I remember coming back here and having like being skinny, tanned, blonde hair, American accent, and I was in a wee country school. I remember going to lunchtime and everybody was playing tractors, and I was like with a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle t-shirt on, yeah. and it was like an alien, yes. you know, coming. Yeah, because you were a wee so American just, boy. I was just a wee American, you know, wow. like one of Hanson. Of course. <laughs> 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 oh, but they were wee girls. They looked like wee girls. <laughs> yeah, yes. I don't think I was far behind them. You know? <laughs> but um, wow, so that's amazing, bro. So you spent. But what was it, three years in Papua New Guinea? I think about there? three, yeah. Yeah, so it's you moved back when you were about 10 or 11? Came back here for primary three, so what age is that? I don't know, see, even that Maybe terminology is, is different oh, from yeah, me. Oh, like year three, so that's year four, I think, and um, yeah, so I yeah. think you're about eight or nine or something, but... Yeah, so that's madness, bro. So you went all, all around and you lived, and did you say you went to America as well? Yeah, Pennsylvania. 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 And how long did you spend Oh, there? very little time. I'm only about, yeah. I think, a year. And, wow. But it, that year, I don't know whether it was because it's formidable years, but I've always felt really at home in the States. Yes. When I go there. Of course. Because of maybe even just, I brought up in that education system. Yes. The TV programs, all that, the food. Like grape flavor for me is still wow. like my go-to kid sort of memory. Right. Um, but yeah. So, and then when I in lot like when I was about sixteen, I, I I don't know how or why, but I just I was almost on track to, to go into Bible college to be a youth minister. Were you? <laughs> wow. I know. <laughs> no, that's amazing. I don't bro. know what that was. That was I think it was peer pressure. Yeah, if you're it's definitely peer pressure. You thought, uh, yeah, but you say that, but I don't know. What do you mean, pressure from your peers? Uh, probably, like, it was sort of, when you grew up in that type of family environment where yeah. everyone's pretty subscribed to that. Yeah. It, you know, you don't get that, you never really get the bird's eye view on it. Mm -hmm. You're saturated in it. Yes. And I think that's the case with nearly most things. People are, about, it's just because mm -hmm. they've been growing up saturated in it. Yes, you know, of And once you get that moment of, like, yeah. separating yourself, separating, and you yeah. see the wood for the trees, you go, Oh, what the fuck? I'm having nothing to do yes, with that. Yes, of know. course. So, and was it like Pentecostal then? Um, It was Baptist, I think. 
Baptist. Yeah. Whoa, he like um like the Southern Baptist churches in America. No, <laughs> it wasn't as bad as that. Like West, <laughs> is that the Westbrook? The Baptist? Westbrook. No, it wasn't as bad as that. They they're just giving Baptist a bad name. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, that. I, I don't. I don't. I mean, do you know what? It's funny. There's a sliding scale of madness in there, yes. right? Obviously, they're at the you know the sharp edge of the madness. Yeah. But actually, you know, stuff that you grew up with in religion here, when you look at it, it is still mad. Yeah. You, like you said earlier on, you have to wear a suit to go in. Yeah. I think you have to cover. You have to wear a wee hat, right? Yeah. Cover your hair. You, you can't sit at the front. If you're, like they're just, they're just completely man-made. Yeah. Substructures on top yes. of a very. I don't really care if I don't want to say a man-made complete structure. But, no, you know, but no, but in a way you are right because I. Listen, like I said, I always, I struggled a lot with church, you know, growing up, I did, that's the truth, but, um, and it's the traditions of it that really irritated me, yeah. you know, and I thought, I can't say any of this in the Bible, for damn sake. you know, I was yeah. struggling with it, so I do know exactly what you mean, and then, when it comes to, like, the, um, it's interesting with me too, for example, I just keep thinking about this, last night, I watched a video on YouTube, and it says, um, I got kicked out, the title was, I got kicked out of a LGBT church again or something, you know? So I clicked on the video to watch it, and there was this, like, guy, and he goes into the church and pretends to be respectful, then interviews the pastor. Yeah. And then as he's interviewing him, he's saying, do you believe in abortion, or do you believe in homosexuality? You yeah. know? And then the pastor looks at him and goes, listen, get out, get yeah. out of my church. And he goes, why, 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 yeah. no? And then I found myself... Supporting the gay pastor. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, what a, <coughs> like, we prick. Is this because the gay pretty much ambushed him? Exactly. Under false pretences? On, his, on his own property. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's yeah. funny, and I, and I don't, I would, I, my views would be more like similar to the kid who's coming in. Yeah, yeah. But I thought his whole attitude now, yeah. if I was there watching it, I'd grab him and say, stop this, bro. The fucking guy's telling you to get out of his property. Yeah. You don't fucking invade a guy. I don't know, it just yeah. bubbled my blood. Well, yeah, you know? that guy just, controversy is king for that guy going into that environment. Yes. It's not he it's actually, it the, likes, that's all it is. Yes. The actual substance of the conversation was null and void. Thank it was you. just the conflict he exact, wanted. That's what I said yeah. to my girl. And, and I actually think, to be honest, that that is why society is the way it is. People just thrive on conflict and yeah. friction. And I doubt, well, obviously there's people who are very, very passionate about their beliefs. Of course yeah. there is. Not everybody's just out there for conflict, but I think social media, it's just without that conflict. Yeah. And there's, you wouldn't watch that video if the guy said, today I'm going to calmly ask this guy for an interview and we're going to debate. Nobody cares about that. Yeah. It, it has to be stealthily ambush, yes. conflict yeah. and visceral for yeah. people to sit there and yeah. just feel you know, yeah. triggered. I know, I and I was feeling, that, everything you just said, that's exactly how I was feeling watching it. And then sure enough, well, how did it end? And when he gets kicked out of the... The church and he's like, oh, the door's closed. No, I can't yeah, get yeah, out. Not yeah. being real wind up merchant, yeah, yeah. you know, like super smug. Then when he gets kicked out, he looks at the camera, and goes, "Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys." Yeah. And I was thinking, bro, yeah. you need booted in your face. Yeah. Like, it just really angered me. I just thought this is not, you yeah. know, what I realized as well. He never wanted to change the pastor's perspective on no, things. Totally. Never. He yeah. just wanted to confront them on camera and then get out. You know what I mean? I was thinking, nah, bro, it bubbles my blood that shit. Yeah, but. Back to the Christianity, because I, I, I'm the son of a pastor as well. You with me? So my dad was a Christian minister, right? Okay. And he's an evangelist, right. an international evangelist. Yeah. So um, I would, I went all around the world with my dad, listening to my dad preaching, and um, I had the, I suppose I had the, like, I was privileged that my dad didn't shove it down my throat or there was no peer pressure. When I was 12, bro, God's honest truth, I kept on falling asleep. My dad would bring me to church, me and my brother would fall asleep in the back of the church. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'm a big fella and I've always been a big boy. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, snoring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And my dad's there and it was embarrassing. Yeah. And in the end, then he says, you don't have to come then. Yeah. So when we were 12, yeah. then we weren't allowed, we didn't have to go to church. I certainly think that evangelicals, sort of, the sort of a bit more, like, I'm say liberal approach to religion, but that fle is a bit more flexible yeah. than the real fire and brimstone, like free Presbyterian or something yeah. like that, where, you know, I think I was somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think opting out was an option, but I don't ever, f I don't even know. It's weird, you, you just do shit your parents tell you to do, don't you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, it's deep. It is, like you say, of course, and everyone does. This yeah. is what I used to have the biggest thing, with my problem with, um, you know, the 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 overall concept of Christianity where they say you have to accept Jesus and if you don't then you're hell forever. Yeah. Because I was thinking, like you said, you do whatever your mum and dad tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I know, like, a, I know a Muslim girl, you know, from Manchester 
and um, she was salt of the earth, like absolute legend, like so pure hearted. She'd never do anything wrong to anyone, and she believed in Islam and all. You with me? But for someone to say no, unless she converts to Jesus and she's going to hell, yeah, I, I just can't subscribe yeah, to that because yeah, yeah. I know there's not a single bad bone in that girl's body. Yeah. You with me? Like, do I agree with her beliefs? Not at all. You with me? But do, do, does that mean then that she's doing? I don't know. I don't well, get it. You yeah, know what th I mean? I mean, you're totally right. And there's a, to take it even a step further, you know, obviously when you grow up uh, in a missionary family, there's that whole thing about the sowing of the seed, the sowing of the seed, you know, the parable, like you threw this, the, the word fell on hard ground and it didn't take on the right ground. And like fundamentally, you know, they talk about if you're not aware of Christianity, right, therefore you can't go to hell. Because you, you never were in a position to make that choice, yeah. right? I always thought, like, don't fucking tell them. Like, yeah. Don't go across the world and go, here, use your tribe. You're doing your tribe thing. It's like, right, here's a crack. You heard about God. No, tell me more. Well, is this God, right? If you don't accept it, you're going to hell. Oh, are you accepting it? No, you're going to hell now. Well, what the fuck are you telling me for? Just leave me alone. Yeah. But the, 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 that's the thing I never, that was the fundamental thing that made me go, this yeah. is fucked up. Yeah. And then it was it's other things like the, the, the whole concept of, of heaven. I remember we had like a philosopher. I don't know if it's right. Not a philosopher. That sounds a bit heavy. Yeah. But this guy came to the church and talked about what heaven was. Yeah. And when you were you're younger, you have this idea, you die, you go to heaven and you meet everybody, your friends and family and blah, blah, blah. And this guy went into it. Like, I mean, I don't know. It, who knows? It's all. Yes. But, and his thing was, and it sort of made sense. You know, you won't, you can't, you're not going to go to heaven and see people, right? Who have, we're all Christians, right? You can't go up there and go, who's that dick from the church? Do you know what I mean? Because you can't, because you can't have exactly. that feeling yeah. of jealousy and up there. Yeah. So like when you strip down human emotion, you're actually a void soul floating about yeah. and there is no identity. And then you go, well, what the fuck's the point? Yeah. Yes. The whole point I want to go there is so I can hang around with people I love. Yeah. So yeah, all these wee things just made me go, ah, oh, it's just too complicated. Yeah, the same with me, bro. When I was yeah. young then, I says to a fella in the church, I went, what is heaven then? What, what do we do in heaven? And this is like an elder in the church, you know, like a high respected guy in the church. So I was expecting like a deep answer, you know what I mean? This is like a high leader. So I says, what is heaven? Like, what are we doing in heaven? And he goes, you know, this, the praise and worship, the singing, the singing part of the, the, the service. And I went, yes. And he went, it's like that, but forever. <laughs> so it's hell. I'm going to hell. <laughs> That's what I thought. I was like, nah. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking, yeah. nah, bro, that's yeah. not what happened. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, telling yeah. you. Yeah. I knew it wasn't like yeah. I was thinking, nah, some secret. But, yeah. but that's, it's everything, everything that everybody talks about heaven is completely man made. Yeah. Because I don't know who was that song, Heaven is a Half Pipe, allegedly, as well. Yeah. So I mean, what is yeah. it? Is it a half yeah, pipe or the per perpetual singer forever? Yeah. But the whole thing of, the streets are paved with gold. Yeah. We, we we assign value to gold. Yes. There's crowns and many crowns. Well, like, we also made that shit up. Yes. So, how, what's like, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, bro. You know, there's I just listen. too many, there's I too many agree. questions. And, yeah, at the same time, I'm not about to, like, fully commit. Because yeah. I think we both know if you've been down the road, if you're on your deathbed, mm. just to be sure. The yeah. last minute you go, I believe it at all. Yeah, <laughs> just, oh, of course. Just to cover your but, ass on your way Yeah, out. but see, not me. See, I'll tell you the God's honest truth. With me, it's always been, I always wanted to know the truth. Yeah. So I don't care about your truth and my truth, and you have your truth, I have my truth, and yeah. we all have we truths. Fuck that, bro. There is a truth. Everything. There could be a fucking trillion, billion, million lies. But there will always only be one truth. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Because the truth's the truth. Yeah. And that is a fact, and that's what I've been obsessed with, wanting to know the truth. Yeah. So that's why, if you said to me, oh, you believe this? Well, I've got some evidence that shows the complete contrary. I wouldn't just dig my heels in and go, no, yeah. no, because I'm just after truth. So if you've got yeah. truth, then, bro, I have to accept it and go with that then. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? That's always been my philosophy on things. That's why I'm not rigid, and I wouldn't get angry at what someone else doesn't believe. I get angry at smugness, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like people who think they know everything, because yeah. it's the it goes right back to Socrates. Yeah. You know when they said you're the most wisest man in the world, he goes, "I'm not." And then he goes, "I, I inter He went and spoke with all the other wise people of the the areas, and then he says, "I come to the conclusion, I am the wisest man of them all." You know why? Because I know that I know nothing, but yeah. they all think they know something. Yeah. They're all sat there, all smug, you know, and that's what I think about a lot of Christians in general. It's the smugness that grinds on me, you know, and that's yeah. why I love talking to them even. I love talking to them about the flat earth as well. You know, first of all, let me ask you, do you believe in God? No, I mean, not, not, certainly not in a dictionary definition of it. No. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, I mean, if, if you've got one end, nothing, straight up nothing, yeah. and then you've got God over there, 
I mean, I don't fully, I'm not, my pendulum's not the whole way over here. And it's probably just the, you know, the human nature to think this, oh, this is probably something really nice at the end of it all, or what would be the point? Mm. But I, I definitely believe that this is as, this is the best part, yeah. living. And I think that if you sacrifice having an enjoy in your life on this idea that there's something better afterwards, you've totally fucked up yeah. because, you know, this is it. Yeah. Like we're, this is, you're living your life right now. Um, tomorrow wasn't even guaranteed. Like today is, and so to, the, to just completely sacrifice a good time for <laughs> maybe something, you know, like attorney's a long time as well, obviously, yeah. Yeah. but now sounds pretty good. And if you can make it as good as possible, then why, why be so concerned about way down there, you know? Yeah, no, hundred percent. But like, like you asked, do I believe in God? I don't know. I, I don't believe in God in the sort of scriptural terminology or in, in any religion, but there is certain things about the human existence that is fascinating and I do find it hard to comprehend that it, it's you know, the the steps from bang to now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There is like a, I think I think for me I think there's a certain spiritual context to things. You know, there's things that happen within human interactions, connecting with people. Yeah. So you know, like we deja vu, all those things. You go, is that cannot? You know, mm -hmm. they transcend you know dogma. Yes. But I don't know if they're certainly representative of like a god per se. Yeah. You know? And then when you said from bang. To now, yeah. do you believe like in the Big Bang then? I don't. Like, or, or I don't was know. that just a? I mean, like it, it, it's. I think anything that falls in the realms of science, you know, you can sort of go, "Hi, oh, right, okay." Science does a good job at sort of explaining most things, yeah. but it still leaves lots of gaps. Yeah. You well, know? the funny, the thing I find interesting about the Big Bang theory is um, th they still have to have two miracles. Yeah. You know, the first miracle is what caused this explosion. And then the second miracle is, is the miracle of life. Yeah. As well, where did this all come from then? You know, yeah. life in general. And the, you know, the explosion all exploded. For everything, nothing exploded into everything that ever was. Yeah. And then they're all shaped into these wee solar systems and galaxies and everything. And, you know, I don't believe in any of that, to yeah. be honest. I don't believe in none of it, even the cosmology. I don't believe in abs like none of it, but it's, I believe the Earth's flat, me bro. That's what I've come to the conclusion. All of. right. I did like, and it's yeah. funny because I used to laugh at it too. Like my brother was the first one. He'd like my brother. He's got a big beard, similar to yours too, bro. My big brother. He lives in Spain, Adam. But he was the first one that introduced me to the flat Earth, and he, I thought this is nonsense. Yeah. Because I my favorite um, subject in school was space. Yeah. I knew all the planets in order and. I knew the distances and I loved the concept and my favourite films were sci-fi films, space and all, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was heavily invested in the, this concept and I says, you're talking nonsense, you know? But the more I just delved into it, no, it took me about, you know, a few months of studying and then I, I thought, my goodness, this is fascinating. So I went to like, you know, Christians that are, you know, that are quite well schooled, you know, and I'd say, what about this in the Bible and all? A lot of them even ended up going, shit, okay, maybe yeah. you're right, like, you know, because the Bible definitely is, like, yeah. the cosmology of the Bible is not the cosmology that we're taught today. Oh, totally. I mean, like, the flat earth thing's interesting for me because it's one of those, I guess it falls in, I hate the term conspiracy theory yeah. as well, because it just sort of, once yeah. it goes into that, it, yeah. it just becomes like well, that a novelty. was coined by the CIA. Yeah, exactly, yeah, they yeah. invented that yeah. exact speak. Mm -hmm. um, it's, the, it's the least, I guess it's the least, like if it, if it did turn out today right it is a flat earth yeah you'd be like oh okay what, what what's it under what's it what's it undermining institutionally that they'll be so afraid of that being revealed like if if all the world leaders got up today and said listen world's flat everybody's gonna like, fuck no way it's flat jesus christ yeah I'll tell you. <laughs> but that's yeah. it I'll tell so you what, what's it undermining i'll tell you what it's undermining. like historically institutionally I'll tell you, speaking, yeah i'll what? tell you what it's undermining first of all think of this it's not only that the earth is flat. A lot of uh, common misperception is that, like, I would believe that the earth is like a flat disk floating through space. Yeah. I don't believe that. I don't believe in space. Right, okay. I don't believe in the concept of space at right. all. And um, when you look at the actual, the cosmo like, the cosmology of the ancients, what they said was is the earth is fixed, does not move, the sky is above us. And then above the sky is like the primordial waters. Right. It's all water, right? And this what's is, we're, we're, but so what like, I'm listen, saying is this. I, I'm, what I'm, I'm saying is this like, though. So yeah. if if what I'm saying is this, if it got proved today yeah. that what I believe is real, 
the reason why it would change everyone's perception of everything is because one, you're not just we're not just a floating ball floating around another floating spinning ball that's yeah. hurtling through an endless vacuum void that keeps growing into no one knows what. Yeah. This a never ending universe that everyone believes in keeps growing into no one knows what it's growing into. Yeah. The, the, so when you believe in all that that's like um that's not what we believe you understand what i'm saying bro yeah. that's not the concept of it at all like i don't believe in any of that so like you know <coughs> so what would you think of their biggest fear about the say, thing just is, saying it is what it because is. because you believe in the big bang it's all like nothingness there's no real meaning to any of it yeah. you, uh, evolution we came grew up from this now if you if, if we found out that what no you are actually the center of everything this earth that is it's like there it's like a Nikola Tesla described it best. Nikola Tesla said, Earth is not a planet. Earth is an enclosed environment system. Okay. And that is the truth. The word planet has nothing to do with Earth either. The word planet comes from Latin, which means wandering star. Because when you look at the night sky, all of the stars are fixed in their position. You know, every night they keep moving in the exact same position. Whereas there is like seven or eight like wandering stars. And they yeah. are what they call the planets. That's what literally the word planet means, wandering so, star. So obviously in the timeline of science, there was obviously that big moment where I can't remember which who it was, astronomer, sort of suggested that every, the, the, everything goes round. The Earth is in a system that goes round the sun opposed to the other way around. Yeah. And at that time he was, it was the church obviously was in control of information yeah. at that point. And he says, oh, listen, actually... The sun doesn't go around us, we go around the sun. Yeah. And the church leaders at the time were like, Yeah. Blasphemer, blah, blah, yeah. right? So, weirdly, the flat earth is sort of more actually in tune with earlier religious thinking than that. It, it we yes. are the center of the world. Yeah, for example, for example, um, it says in one of the books of the Bible that um, God stopped the sun in its course, uh, on its course across the sky. Mm hmm. So he kept it fixed. Right, okay. Like God stopped Do you mean in like Genesis as far as... No, not accident? in Genesis. No, what book is this? And, um, I can't quote me on that. Um, I should have found out the actual... But it is a fact. You can type it in. I think it's... Um, is it in Judges? I think it's in Judges. But it says... Um, was it for Daniel or something? It might have been for the prophet Daniel. I can't remember. But it says God stopped the sun and its, and its tracks across the sky. Yeah. You know? So when, then when you ask about that, what are you saying then? Did he stop the sun? How could he stop the sun? Because the sun's fixed. It's actually the earth yeah, yeah. that's spinning. Do you know what I mean? And they yeah. go, oh, it's like a poetic. It's poetic language. You know yeah. what I mean? And you're like, okay, but there's like a hundred scriptures like that that does, for example, it says, you know, um, I, I love this one the most. I'd say, if you believe in the seven-day creation, which I do, you know, but it says if you believe in the seven-day creation, it says that on day one, God created the heavens and the earth. And then on day two, he created the firmament, which separates the waters from above the sky okay. from the waters below. Yeah. Then it says on day three, he made land and water. And then guess what he made on day four? The sun, the moon, and the stars. So my question to all people that believe in space and all that is, if you believe he created the sun, the moon, and the stars on day four of creation, what was this earth spinning around for the first four days of existence? Yeah, okay. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, no, I totally understand. I just, I just thought, I'm trying to sort of like um, put these pieces together here. So the, f I thought at the beginning of the conversation you were sort of less, um, as f inclined to believe in Christianity and the Bible. Yeah. But actually, you, you are. So it's interesting. I don't. Or do you, is there certain parts that you just? No, I, so believe, I believe in the Bible as a historical record as well. Right, okay. I do believe that. I yeah. definitely believe. Although even some of the stories are very fascinating, like the story of Noah. You yeah. know, there is stories of all different cultures yeah. that all talk about this exact same story. Like in, even ancient Babylon. They talked about um, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Yeah. And that's pretty much like the characters of yeah. Noah. Well, I, th I think that the... I don't know if I correct terminology, but Christianity certainly is the newest form of storytelling that mirrors quite a lot of other religious, yeah. um, certainly Greek. Yeah. Now, this is where I am not educated enough to really fully commit to what I'm about to say, 
but I've watched the zeitgeist, okay? So, yeah, <laughs> but I'm, do you know what I mean? Right? <laughs> like, I'm go, yeah. I'll just go to the start, and obviously they talk about that, but it, the the, fun, the foundation or the fundamental principles that that's all built on is still astrological yeah. sequence yeah. of the movement, the night and day, the Egyptian um, of Set and yeah. Horus and the combat and light and darkness, and you can fully actually understand that. We yeah. take it for granted that whenever we hit a light, light switch, light's going to come on. Mm-hmm. But if you go back a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, like nighttime was a, was an extremely dangerous time. Yeah. For us now, we can lock our doors and, and you know we've got yeah. you know all that sort of safety. But I'm just, so we're, we're we're in that line. Would you? Because this sounds like a quite a hybrid, out or not a hybrid, but ver, view that you have where yeah. it's sort of based. It's like historically on the Bible as a historical reference, but other people are lo- lo- looking at that through a lens of modern day Christianity where you're looking at it be, take the historical reference and then yeah. using that yeah so it was interesting like you said similar to you I grew up in a in a Christian household you know and um, you took it as fact but then you got bored with it I got bored with it then like started hanging about with all the lads and all doing mad shit and all. then when I was like 16 I actually became a Christian again like a proper Christian yeah wrote like Christian raps and all like uh, I took um, well, I took the Bible and picked all my favourite scriptures out and made it made them rhyme Okay, you know and I can rap it now yeah, to this day like yeah, I know yeah. and it's like a scripture rap you know yeah. what I mean? could yeah, just yeah. rap it off you know and I've done that in churches and all when preaching with my dad like I said he was an international evangelist yeah. so I went to like Holland with my dad and I got booked to, uh, to preach in yeah, a yeah. different part of Holland than my dad <laughs> you know what I mean when I was like 16 I was going around doing all that and all and that lasted for about a year and a half, and then when I moved back to Manchester, I like you know, like you would, I suppose Christians here would say backslid. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, the big but, old backslid. But, <laughs> but you see, when I was a Christian, similar to what you said, when towards the latter stages, it started to get a bit mental. Same with me. Like we were at a church here, and I loved it. It was an amazing church. But they said they're having like this retreat, and they went down and they said, um, "You're gonna get blessed by the Holy Spirit, you know, today, and you have to speak in tongues." Yeah. And I says, what do you mean speak in tongues? And I says, just say anything. Like, let's pray for you. You're going to speak in tongues. So I closed my eyes and they were there. You know, just start, pr- say something. And I said, thanks, thank you, God, for my life. And all that. no, 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 not in English. Just anything that isn't English. Yeah. And how did you feel? Because I had a similar experience. Yeah. With the tongues part. Yeah. And I remember at the time, like, if, at the time, it was overwhelming. Yeah. Like, especially yeah. if you're young. You're young. You're certainly, um, what's the word for, like, if not, you're, yeah, vulnerable, and vulnerable, and susceptible, and susceptible to, yeah. to that type of thing, yeah. and then it, it, there's the heavy weight of the of the people around you. Yeah, that's sort of like there's a couple of ones. There's different ones like the Toronto blessing, you know, the Toronto yeah, blessing, of course. where that's that like you know the hands on yeah. it. No, the dead. And, they all and put people, their hands and on people like if you're in a room with ten thousand people, like you're certainly like, shit, I'm falling because like if I don't fall, like you know, there's a lot of pressure on me here. Yeah. But yeah, I do remember that, and it probably was a, a thing that sparked maybe going on to do youth work. But I also, I don't know, I definitely went, fuck this, uh, big style. Like, and I, actually, I can remember the pivotal moment was we were in Liverpool, it was in a place called Biber, Kippenry Bible College, and we were lying in bunks. And that day we were going into Liverpool to you know, do street ministry. Yeah. And I remember just waking up at like six o'clock and remembering, we're going to Liverpool, I'm going to go to the Tate Modern and Slipknot have a new album coming out. And I looked over at everybody else and they were in their beds reading the Bible and I just went, nah, I'm not, this is not where I need to be. Right. Like that was yeah, definitely so the fundamental. Love, so did you love rock music or not? Yeah. Too? I mean like, and I yes. remember that, that, that same Slipknot album. Yeah. My mum found that years later, like not even years later, six months later and I and I mean that was, that was shit hit the fan. Yeah, of course, because the lyrics, listen, the lyrics of that is like, though, Slipknot, this is what's scary, this is what I need to ask you about then. Yeah. Because Slipknot, to me, it is like the complete opposite then to Christianity. It's oh, like totally. devilish. It is devilish. Well, it is. And, and I mean, it's, but it's theatrics as well. Yes. You know, like it's certainly, oh, but like that language, yeah. if you're a Christian and you're reading that language, yeah. that is, I mean, if you think of anyone who's passionate about anything, right? Yeah. Human rights, um, get, you know, any sort of like social issue that they're really passionate about, the, 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 the counter to that is extremely offensive yeah. and deeply hurt, hurtful. Yeah. And that's what Slipknot lyrics are to a Christian. Yes. It's like, it is the most visceral, 
thing. If you're not into Christianity, you read it, you go, oh, it's just the yeah. theatrically, yes. you know, devil this, yeah. devil that. But so to that, the, it's like, holy so, shit, this is visceral. So what know? though? So, but if you you grew up in a Christian family, why, why and, not have appealed and, to me? And you were like, yeah, why did it appeal to you? I would say, like most kids, you just wanted diff different. Like you wanted to be cool, you want to be part of the part of the gang yeah. but you also want to sort of stand out as you know your own and be cool yeah. and I think it was just anything about that like I was a goth yeah. you know I was like black fingernails uh, drawn like tattoos and stuff, which obviously led to the tattoo sort of thing yeah. the music it was just probably just to express that teenage angst yes. you know like Limp Bizkit I mean I guess for young people hip hop I love Limp Bizkit it's just got that like I love you can, Limp you're hearing lyrics that are certainly not you're not allowed to explicit yeah. Listen, you get 14, 15 years old when you see explicit in anything, you're yes, going to be like, this is what I want to be into. Yes. But, yeah, I, I wasn't, I don't think it was a straight up counter to the religious aspect that was in my life. Yeah. Like, trying to escape to that. Yeah. It just so how Slipknot was in there amongst many, many other things. Yes. It was just the one my mum found, which was holy shit. What did your mum do? Your oh, I mean, like, close to an exorcism, you know, <laughs> as like as as much as a crit newborn, crit, you know, Christian household would do yeah. like it was pretty bad and that followed a week after finding Bizarre Magazine and you know uh, the back section of Bizarre Magazine uh, I know but you know that was on, soft bro. you know I know and you know what I don't I, that's the one thing I said as well I remember when I was about fucking 12, 13 I'd go into the wee shop and I'd get my mate to ask the guy how much the sweets are and I'd run yeah. the top magazine you remember yeah, 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 and then yeah. it would be under my bed and my mum would find it and like you said you would you were the worst person in the world. Yeah, oh, you're disgusting. I know. Oh, you're the men. Yeah. You're there all the bars. Yeah. I'm not in that style either. That's but not good. You know what? Actually, all of those things, anything that, you know, you, as a young person is like, um, you're a moth to the flame. Yeah. And they're all the things that actually, those moments, be it pornography, music you're not listening they listen to, drugs, all those things, you spend those formidable years being like, if you get away with it, right, that's cool. But if you get caught and lambasted, heavily burdened with guilt. Yeah. And those are things that I think so many adults just still like swallow like hand grenades. Yeah. They're in there and they've never really addressed yeah. them. Yeah, well, that's what's you scary. Know? That's that's them type of adults. There, it's, And a lot of Christians are like that. You yeah. find that. It's immensely it's all, taboo. Yes. Yeah. And then they come in and they're act all holier than thou. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. wouldn't do nothing. And then they're sinister. And that, oh, yeah. that type of environment even breeds that behavior. Oh, yeah, totally. Because they think, oh, well, I've got away with this. I'll get away yeah. with that. I'll keep getting away with whatever. Yeah. Can get. But on the outside, they're all less. Well, it's like that's why they put people with white coats on toothpaste adverts yes. because they're like they're wearing a white coat you go you can trust that guy exactly. he, he knows he's talking about and it's the same with ministers you know or not ministers um, but like church in general yeah. the suit almost you put that on it's like the opposite of Clark Kent you know yeah. you put that on all of a sudden you're trustworthy yeah. and in that environment the stubble standards and hypocrisy in churches is just overwhelming yeah. I mean I just remember it almost felt like every other month it was like did you hear somebody had an affair did you hear somebody had an affair of course Enjoy. You know, yes. and That's it's just it's up. just that environment. You get 100%. that many people together who are up their own arse. You know, but you see, so the difference with me is, is though, because I'm I've so seen fucked. By the way, like I have to put a thing on. I post this, mom, mom, don't watch this. None of my family watch this podcast because like it's gonna break their fucking hearts. No, but, but, <laughs> it no, really but, is. But I don't know because some people say that about like when I talk to my dad. Me, I, I wouldn't get. I wouldn't agree with everything my dad says. No, I love my dad more than anyone. I die for him. But me and him would sit and have an argument like about the Bible and he'd get angry even. He'd be like, how dare you think this? Yeah, yeah. Are you telling me you think this? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I'd think, oh, he's getting stressed. <laughs> yeah, <I'd be> like, <laughs> you think? <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, no. But listen, yeah. but you know what though? After it's all said and done, he's my dad and my yeah. dad loves me to death and yeah. I love him to death. Like, it doesn't matter what we believe in that respect. You yeah. know what I mean? Although, I'm... I'm so this is but back to like the music when you say this is what I still can't get my head around because when I was about 12, 13, like I said, I fell asleep again. I said, Dad, I find it boring. Can't be, I can't be asked with it. No, I was listening to music and all, and I would listen to Wu Tang. Yeah, you with me? But you and that was like me then probably rebelling against the church and they're swearing and all, and they're using swear yeah. words and they're talking about shooting people and all. And I was thinking, these guys, man, this is sick shit. So I was listening to that. I looked at Marlon Manson. And he's like, and he's there saying like, the devil six six six, you know. And I'm thinking, devil not for me. That's too far. It's step too far. So, but this is what yeah. I can't understand. Like, uh, even like Nirvana. Yeah. Some of Nirvana was cool. So, like when I was young, then I heard Nirvana, and he was like, um, "Come as you are," yeah, you yeah. know. And I was thinking, gangster man, I can vibe with that. Yeah. Even like smells like Team Spirit. No, it's a bit heavier. But it was like, okay, cool. Yeah. But he wasn't literally going, the devil is my king. Yeah. Like, 
what is the what was the fascination with that to you, bro? I can't figure. I don't that know. Out. I mean, like it probably was a slight. You know what I would say, especially with Slipknot, because you know I don't even could you couldn't hear half the lyrics. Yeah, it was mostly screaming yeah. that I can remember. Yeah, that's what. So I, can... I grew up like even though my parents were missionaries, there was still like soft rock about the house. Yeah, and then uncles that listened to like ACDC, Iron yeah. Maiden. So yeah. Slipknot was just like I guess like in the same way. Now, the I don't know much about hip hop, but like. Yeah. Every genre of music does tend to yeah, um, get up a have its up, um, yeah, and it becomes this extreme yes, version of it. Yeah. It almost gets so extreme that it pops, yes. and that's why I think Slipknot and Marilyn Manson that was at its at its at its peak, peak. Yes. and then it popped. Yeah. You know, it was everything was theatrical. The music videos, I would say, they were probably sitting in the same way MTV videos. It was like more blood, more blood. Let's get some dead crows through the dead crows. And it was just the theatrics of it, yeah. and it was almost. I, I don't think. I doubt very much that half the singers even really fully believed in what they were singing about. So, yeah, it does sound very, very um, satanic, but I would say it has, has it has, doesn't have the same weight as people singing um, hymns. Mm-hmm. They don't. People are in the just that just teenage angst. Yeah, and for and you want to be you want to you just want to every you, we always remember school. There's always somebody walking around like. You know, black hair, and they're just you know, look, I'm into this, and yeah. you know, I don't really pop popular. I want to be my own thing, and I think music is just. Yeah. I think for everybody, certain types of music, except for pop music, <laughs> but even pop music in itself is another like the masses just sort of you know that mediocrity. We just sort of swarms to that. Yeah, you know? but it's, talking about pop music. So when I was young, I was obsessed with subliminal messages and pop music. Right. Okay. You know, and it would be like you know, because like I said. I, I stopped believing in, like, I, I did never stop believing in God. I stopped believing in the power of churches yeah, yeah. when I was, like, 12. I was yeah. thinking, this doesn't make sense. Bunch of old people there, give me your money and have a wee communion and all. Yeah. Just sitting there falling asleep on a Sunday morning. What? And then I found out about the Freemasons and the Illuminati and all this shit when I was 12. Yeah. They were with me. So I was studying, then next thing, boom, 9-11 happened and all. And I was like, that's not real. No, this is all, there's something else going on. It's not what they're painting it out to be. Yeah. So I was into all of this shit from day one. You with me? So that's what I was studying from a young age. And that's why I seen like, like witchcraft and all. I knew all that was real. Yeah. You with me? And I did know it was real. I always studied it, but I seen that it was in the church too. Yeah. I seen that the church wasn't like um like a holy place, you know. It was yeah. it was fucked up, especially all the Toronto blessing shit and all. Yeah. And, you know, and can you speak? That's more like a witchcraft chant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know totally, what I mean? yeah. They're saying do that, and like I said, they all had their hands around me, going speak in tongues. You say it. You yeah, say yeah. it. I'm thinking, I, you know what I did, bro? I said, get the fuck off me. Yeah. I says, I'm done with this. This is me finished. Yeah. But I never threw the baby out with the bathwater. I know that that's not a representation of God. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 Not with God. You with me? Yeah. God's like a, it's a, it's bigger than that, you know. So that's why when I, like me and my brother went to um, Alderley Edge on Halloween to try and find a witch cult that we knew yeah, existed yeah. there, and the police protected them. And they drove around, and um, my dad rang us. Did I, did you know about this? My dad rang us. He was asleep, and he he got woken up out of his sleep, and he rang us and says, "Where are you?" And I said, "We're just about to enter this forest," and he says, "You are in grave danger. You just need to run." Get out of there as quick as you can, and I'll pick you up. And my dad drove, and this was like half one in the morning, Halloween night. I ran out and I seen these like creatures in the road, and they looked like trees. I said, They're not men, they're trees. But I realized there was no feet, and they were like coming towards us. It was fucked up. I was like 18 at the time. Yeah. And we ran off, and I said, to My dad was seeing these things in the middle of the road coming towards us. Like, and and um, I said, They were like trees. And he says, There's a story in the Bible Jesus healed a man. And he rubbed mud on his eyes and says, what do you see? Right, he yeah, says, yeah. I see a man as trees. Yeah. And he went, shit, he just healed you a bit too much. Uh, yeah, yeah, more mud. And he rubbed it and he says, what yeah. do you see? And he goes, oh, I can see now. And, Who um, was that? That was, well, in the, that was in the... I do remember that story. The Bible, the man I, I, forgot, I didn't... I didn't I obviously, I heard like the more like lemon version yeah. of that when you're younger. Yeah. I didn't hear that part about, you know, yeah, over enlightenment. But yeah. then that's what... The, I mean, if you talk to anybody who's... Um, you're taking like a really strong dose of like DMT or that, that yeah. the forest thing is something yeah. that they're very in tune well with. Then, you know? Well, anyway, when I we ran away from that and that was freaked in, but we only, like I said, I only ever smoked weed, I've never took any other drugs in my life. But then, anyway, about two months later, what happened? Marlon Manson released a music video, yeah, and he stood in the forest looking like a big weird tree. 
and it's like a demon tree and it was yeah. like what well, I seen it sort of give me goosebumps it's like ah that's fucked up yeah. it was on MTV and I just skipped it and uh, that's why because I always knew like m m my dad as well like remember when you said they nearly exercised you as a child I wrote a song about this called Victor um, I, I, I seen an exorcism literal real exorcism happen in front of me and this was like a, a convicted killer as well. And the guy ended up like stabbing himself with scissors and all and slit his throat at the end. Do you remember me? But yeah. he was crawling under my bed like a snake. And it was like a supernatural thing. That yeah. I was only a kid and I seen him. He slithered out from under my bed. My dad grabbed him up and the guy was speaking and all mad. Yeah. So I seen all this shit happen. Yeah. You remember me? I've seen like, like spiritual shit. So when I'm watching all like... That's why I, I rebelled against fakeness. When I even became a Christian at 16, I says to my mate who became a Christian with, if there's anything fake here, bro, like Probably, I said, my, yeah. my quest is truth. So I'm not just here to find a wee community and settle in. I just want truth. Yeah. Always have done. Um, even the theatrics of the fucking demon shit and all never appeal to me. If anything, acting all fucking dark and devilish doesn't mean shit to me. I remember meeting a, a Satan worshipper when I was 17. And he had 666 written his head, blood drips and all painted nails and all. He, wa he wanted everyone to be yeah, afraid of that's, him. Yeah. I became his mate and says, come, let's have a drink together. I want to talk to you. Me and him sat and talked for like three hours and the guy ended up crying and all. And like saying, I fully understand where you're coming from. Sit there and explain everything to him. And I realised the guy was just messed up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, I think, I think that there's definitely like a cry for help in a lot of those things. Or yeah. a cry for attention. And then that comes from its own thing. You know... Uh, like if I look at people who are heavily tattooed to that extent, yeah, there's got to be something behind that, like as yeah. to why you would want to like get to the point of disfiguration, uh, and and where that where so much of your I, I, your persona right in front of for the public, you know. So, like I don't know, maybe I just type of person that just dabbles on through life on like a skim and stone and never fully it like gets into anything and that's actually I definitely am that person yeah. I, I, I take a little bit of everything yeah. and I never go full bore into anything yeah. simply because a lot of us do with groups anyone like four people and I can't be arsed because oh, you when, you, when you get a large group yeah. of people there's too much conflict inevitably built into that system so you know even though I'm into tattoos whiskey cars I, I, it's like I, I, I'll do it but I never go full bore into it and I think that that there's it's probably allows you it probably muddies the water in that you know there's too much ingredients where if you fully come in like Christianity is a full is pretty much the traditional full on I'm in when you're into that there's so much you're just excluded from yeah and I think your approach to it certainly is very explorative yeah where you're looking beyond the 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 sort of the typical is it dogma the right word for that yeah, is yeah dogma the right dogmatic, you're, you're looking yeah. past that but I think like you know why do we even have so many, like even within Christianity, particularly in Northern Ireland, and well, in the West, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Free Presbyterian, so many different like sub yeah. um, cultures, sub genres yeah. within under that one umbrella, yeah. and it's it's because even people simply can't agree to one yeah. straight up because once once the conversation goes past the Ten Commandments, they just become conflict. A yeah. disagreement. Yeah. Like I remember one time there was a conversation about we're no longer using these hymn books because it turns out three of the hymns in it come from a writer who had this idea, and you're like, "Flip on hell, you're splitting hers now, yeah. here, mate." Like you yeah. know, like cause if you if you go into if you yeah. went into that much, like <laughs> it's a fucking rabbit hole. You'll never come out uh, the other no, side, you know. Real. So I think like I do tend to just sort of like you know, pop my head into things and go, oh, "I'll yes. take I'll take this and fuck you, yes. I'm away here because yes. like, it's too intense in there." Of course. So uh, my idea of when I say that about Marilyn Manson in the theatrics. It's because I wasn't really into it. Yeah. It was just a little bit of that. Yeah. But I knew guys that were full goths. Yeah. You know, and they were like white makeup and yeah. like going into school. And it's just, I think when you're young, you just really, it's a weird thing. You want to blend into the background and stand out at the exact same time. Yeah. It makes no sense. Bro, you know what you though? Know? It's fascinating because I'll tell you this now. I went to a school in Moss Side, loads of like, um, it was like a quite gang related like spot as well. There was a lot of like gangs there and all yeah. you with me. I hung about with a few goth kids. Yeah. You know, I remember the two girls, Kara and Kara, and they were all like wee goth kids, you with me? And then like a couple of wee geeky lads and all. But I loved them. They yeah, were yeah. like my wee team. I loved them as well, you with me? Cause, yeah. And they, they were all into the rock music and all. I was like, I took wee bits. Yeah. Like I said, I loved um, about two or three songs from Nirvana, Corn, 
and fucking slip nothing yeah, yeah. out of the mansion. Yeah. They can go fucking fuck themselves down. Like, <laughs> too, far, too, too far, too yeah. far. But yeah. I mean, like some some of it was cool, and yeah. the girls and all. I didn't mind them at all. You with me? I got on with them all like well. So, and and, and I know that there is like a there was a thing between like the goths and hip hop as well, wasn't there? You know what I mean? Like the sort of correlated as well like yeah. remember Eminem and uh, Marlon Manson and that's that right day. yeah yeah there so was there was like I think but I think that in that respect like it was just I don't know what it is about maybe a young age just trying to yeah maybe there isn't if you want to go down the, the sort of maybe they're, they're just trying to create divis, divis, divisive ideology towards young people and just splitting them at a young age into factions of course. through music yeah. oh you guys are this yeah, group you I guys know. are this group yeah. and then as you get older you're just already yeah. you already have this I like broken it, up that's ideology that's why I was mates know. with them as well I've done it on purpose and then my best mate was like a gangster kid you really yeah. me and him were like best mates and then I'd have my wee group and they were all like wee goth kids there was a wee fat boy who was a bit mad I loved him I just loved characters Yeah. and I, and I never and I seen all them clicks there's the goths there's the wee indie kids yeah. there's the wee computer kids there's the, you know and they were all the, the rappers the football team the rugby squad the basketballers I was like fuck that but I used to just mingle yeah well that was exactly know? the same I was like a goth when I was on the rugby team that was yes. a very strange you know yes, sir. connection yeah, yeah. those two things were very very far apart yeah. but yeah the music the, that part of um, the slip that, that moment was definitely the pivotal moment when I went ah it's just not for me because I mean if yeah. you're not passionate about something just get, just leave the room. Like, yeah. if you're not passionate about it, like, there's no point being involved. Course. You're taking and, up the space. Yeah. And know. not only that, you're going to cause real fucking conflict in your head yeah. if you kept on trying to balance the two. Yeah. You, be, you might as well go with what your passion is. You yeah. with me? So that's what you've done then. So when you got more into, like, the, the, the music and all, and you loved that then, what, you fell away from Christianity? I, like don't, a lot? I, don't, I don't know. I mean, like, it, it certainly, it wasn't, the two overlapped. I remember, you know, you, music's one of those things. It's, it's all about... It's part of that part when you're when you're a kid where you have money, your own money, yeah. and therefore you can make your own choices. Yeah. If I've got pocket money, now I don't have to listen to my mum and dad's CDs. I can now go and buy the CDs I want. Like TV as well. Now, now that I've got, a, you get older, you get access to television. It's just, I think it's just access, and that's yeah. when you start creating, like, find out what you're into, and you know, subconsciously creating your own identity. I was that was around the age I was really tattooing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, how old were you when you started? Tattooing? I started tattooing when I was about 16 and a half, 16, 16 and a half. So right. I started very young. Right. And I actually had a tattoo lying in that bunk that time in Bible College. Right. So I already I was tattooed at that point, yeah. and I'd already done tattoos. What was your first tattoo? A spray can. A spray can. I used to do, graf do graffiti as well. Shit. With travel around it. Right. That's ah, pretty grim. That's cool, yeah, bro. Yeah. I love graffiti. Um, I so yeah, a it's a big spray can, like with a skull Set. and all. Where on. was it? But on the on the leg. Set. Yeah, and I remember. Lying in bed, I came back from the cape and rain. I was lying in bed, and um, my mum came into the room, and my legs hanging out. And she just went, boo boo. Oh, it's went ballistic. Is that, and like, uh, and what was it? Your mate or something done it? Or was no, it the a... guy that taught me, my, yeah. my dad's friend, had had a studio, and yes. I was working, sort of helping him out, doing designs, tattooing at the weekends. Like, it was a real quite a a blurry mix match of stuff. And around that time, that's when I moved out. I got my own house uh, when I was seventeen, and just decided that. Everything that I was into was just causing too much conflict. Now, there weren't bad things. I was like, I was, you know, a, a good kid. Yes. I certainly wasn't, you know, like disrespectful or any of that. But everything I was into just was not yeah. the, the ideology of the household. So of I course. just needed my own space. Yeah. And that's why I moved out. And then tattooing just w went from not to 100 at that point. You know? Wow. I was just tattooing from the get go. And that was. And never what stopped. was you doing at first? And Everything. Just predominantly, like, there's no doubt about it. I, predominantly. Or a large proportion of it would have been polymilitary tattoos. Of course. Because that's that's essentially what most yep. most people you if you weren't getting tribal or traditional old you know, sailor bill type stuff with sort of overtones of yep. polymilitary stuff, you were getting straight up polymilitary yeah. tattoos. And that didn't matter whether they were from a nationalist or a loyalist community, it was just that's what you were doing. <laughs> yeah. Um and I remember just reading them looking at magazines of Japanese tattoos and you know, I was down in Portadown, so it's predominantly, it would have been loyalist tattoos. Yeah. And it was just, you're sitting doing these things, and you're looking at Japanese bodysuits, and you just think, <laughs> that's, how is this ever, how am I going to get from here to there? Yes. In the same way, I would say for young people who are aspirational into any type of music, sitting reading a music magazine, and thinking, how do I, like, this is, how, this is what I do, and this is what I want to do, how do I possibly... 
get, from, that, get yeah. from here to there. Yeah. And actually, it's just it's just years of little checkpoints that all of a sudden you wake up one day and you're exactly right there. Yes. You know, like you said earlier on, on the front of a magazine. Yeah. That when you were 15 years prior, how do I get to be in a magazine? Yeah. But, um, so yeah, yeah it was predominantly. What, you said about the magazine, yeah. that's how I first heard of you. That's right, yeah. And it was um, Ulster Inc. Ulster Inc. And they've done like a wee article on me. That's right, yeah. And you were the front cover front of the cover. magazine. Yeah. And it was, was it you on the front cover? Oh, that there? was me, yeah. I was a lot, I, I yeah. was skinnier and I had less hair. <laughs> and I was a wee trim, my beard was a bit more organised. But yeah, that was me in the front. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, that was. That was about 10 years ago. That was about eight, yeah, yeah, eight. probably is about, yeah. Yeah, 2016. Yeah, I, I always yeah. just think about how, what, when did I start putting weight back on again? And I think <laughs> the, the, that was when I was probably at my best shape. But yeah, the tattooing thing was predominantly doing that. And um, were you working in someone else's shop then back yeah, then? Yeah, down at Portadown, yeah. And Portadown, so and Portadown. then how long were you there for? Two, a summer and a half, and then I moved to Belfast with my girlfriend, who's now my wife, when I was 18. Wow. Yeah, so we moved to Belfast, and I tattooed sort of in the house. And did you meet her in Portadown? Oh, yeah, yeah we, we sort of knew each other since we were like 14, 15. Right, and was she into the tattoo? Not or? at all, not at all. Um... She, we used to get the same bus. We know that we know this now, um, and like you should think she was like the hot girl at the back of the bus because she was older than a yeah. year older than me, which is a lifetime in school years. Of course it is. One year Obviously. now it's like yeah, you know, but back then, back then no. it was a big course. thing. And um, so yeah, we ended up moving to Belfast, and then I opened the studio um, when I was twenty, so seven. And is this White old. Dragon? Then? White Dragon and Botanic, yeah. Yeah, and you were twenty just when you just opened 20, it. Just twenty, yeah. My goodness, yeah. bro. And that's in Botanic then. Botanic. But that is like literally the ignorance of youth, yeah, or confidence of youth. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, it was it was done. I think we, you know, Jenna, my wife, took a loan for three thousand pound out of the bank, three grand, yeah. and opened the shop with me. Wow, I know. And like literally, the day we opened, <laughs> like we did it all ourselves, like painting, and I hadn't really a clue. You know, you're yeah. just learning on the job. And I remember I'd ordered a sofa. I went to DFS, one of those sofa shops. Yeah. And I'd bought an X display one because like, we were really down to the last few hundred quid. And they were like, we'll deliver it out. And they delivered and there was a foot, there was something wrong with the leg of it, right? And I rang up and was like, something wrong with the leg. We'll send out somebody to fix it, all right. So this guy turned up to fix it later that afternoon and he walked in. I was like, oh, is this a tattoo? Yeah. Oh, can I, can I get a tattoo? And I was like, yeah, well, I could do it tomorrow because I decided it was only going to be appointments, right. which was totally quite new at the time. And so he turned up the next day to get a tattoo, and I never didn't tattoo ever since. The next day after that was his brother-in-law. The day after that was one of his friends from the gym, and it just from the day and hour that opened up, it was just kaboom. And then Sick. maybe I decided pretty earlier on because it was called White Dragon. The, the the passion always lay with Japanese. Yeah, that was the goal to to just do Japanese tattoos, and it took probably about two or three years to transition. Because even at that time, to be a specialist, like everybody thought. Like I was an, like how arrogant to decide to do one thing. Yes, I know. But you're like now that's just a complete norm. Yeah. You know people. St- you know you wouldn't say to a musician, "How dare you to say just to do me. folk music?" Know. You have obviously to. You know not. you obviously of you wouldn't. Of course. But what they're know. acting is is saying, "If I want that, you do that." Yeah, yeah. And there was there was <laughs> yeah. kickback for sure. Yeah. You know certainly for people that just couldn't wrap their head around it. What do you mean you only do one thing? Yeah. But um, not that that's it. And like that, that's fifteen. 20 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. Yeah. And it's just, time has just evaporated since. Like, it's just, you know. And it's know. mad because, like you said, you know, you'd get it, so they'd get it, and then they'd go and show their mates, and then all their mates just like, yo, two of them would look yeah. in, and then it just. Because that was before social time. media. Yes. Before Facebook, there was Google. I'm pretty sure there was Google, but there was no YouTube. Yeah. Like, at all. I remember a customer saying, Have you ever heard of YouTube? Yeah. Like that's mad to even think that. I oh, know. Um, <laughs> I think there was MySpace probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah MySpace. I had a MySpace. I was a yeah, MySpace. MySpace of course. Yeah. That's what I started on. Yeah. They first came to me saying, "You've got a website here. Yeah. You can have your own website." And I was thinking, "Yeah." I know, like a website. But I loved MySpace. Yeah, yeah. And you had the part, the player. With yeah. The, the I actually, it, I actually right? think about MySpace and think. We're no better off. No better off. That with Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Facebook was a downgrade from MySpace. Yeah, it totally was. MySpace was so much more. You could customize your background. Loved like it. Like you bro. said, had a player. Yeah. It even had a whiteboard, I think. Yeah. Or and like I told you about how many views your yeah. page had. Yeah. So every time someone went on the page, it was giving That's you another right, it was view. Counting all that. And then it counted all the plays of the songs. Yeah. Um, the biggest rapper in Manchester at the time is Shifty. 
and his MySpace was booming, and yeah. you could watch his MySpace in real time. Many people were coming in and out. Yeah, yeah. Do you know if Facebook, if Facebook ruined it, yeah. And I would point blank refuse to get a Facebook yeah. for ages. I said nah, and then MySpace fell to bits, didn't yeah. it? It actually just, just like, yeah. I don't know what it. happened. People just shifted on the no, the but Facebook they even platform. changed oh, it. Did even they? like it, they yeah, literally, I think. Facebook or something bought them over or something and then literally turned MySpace's page into some deformed page. Oh, just to you actively even really, try and make yeah, people just jump yeah, ship from one to the other? Literally. It was yeah. mad, bro. It was a weird Yeah, it's, isn't it weird how... Yeah, how did that... That's not an evolution in a, in a good way at all, but from yeah. MySpace to... Thing. Instagram... Instagram's... I mean, social media, like, it is it's a necessary happened. evil. You sort of have to engage with it. Bro, listen, it's happening again. It was MySpace to Facebook, Facebook... To Instagram, yeah, and then Instagram now is slowly being destroyed by the TikTok, isn't it? Right. Everyone's yeah, saying yeah, 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 right TikTok. Yeah. I'm point blank refusing it. I'm saying, yeah. nah, bro, I don't have TikTok. I have, I have TikTok. Yeah. For the the whiskey and the tattooing. Yep. And in reality, there are two products that are for over eighteen year olds. Yeah. So you think I drag my heels, uh, and I thought, no, there's no point in doing this. Yes. Yeah. But then I actually realised, you know, the business man of me sort of was like, well, yeah. hold on. Three years ago was 2020, the start of lockdown. Yeah. People who are 18 now were 15 then. You of know? Of course. So, like, yeah. 18 years, like, I tattooed a guy last week, week, a couple weeks ago, and he was he was just turning 18. He was born 2005. Yeah. <laughs> Is that I right? Know, bro. It's 2005. Madness. Yeah. It's like, I have stuff in my fridge. Yeah. I, stuff, I have stuff in my cupboard from 2005. <laughs> I know that for a fact. I found a pack of mince pies down the back of the cupboard the other day yeah. and they were out of the eight four years ago. Oh, stop. So what I mean? That guy was 14 whenever I bought them. Oh, no. <laughs> you just remind me about mince pies, bro. See, I am a fanatic. I'm like an extremist by nature. I'll never forget. I um, came home one night. I was about 15, smoking weed, and I came home. And there was a pack of 24 mince pies. Yeah. It was, you know, the way they're usually coming 12s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this was a double pack. Double pack. So it's yeah, 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 24 yeah. mince yeah. pies. And I was like, blip, you know, and I had the munchies <laughs> in, and I thought, I don't know if I like mince pies, and I ate one. And then I thought, oh, I do like mince pies, and then I had another one. Got the laptop, I was watching something on YouTube, yeah. you know, eating away. And then I had one tray, forgotten, I was watching something. Next thing, I ate the whole 20. Were they small or were they full on, they full like, whack? About that size, you know yeah. what I mean? Like a normal mince pie. Like when yeah. I was even, I even started putting them all, all in, you know what I mean? Just, and, yeah, but if you, and you never had them before that? I did, but I didn't. I mustn't have been high and I mustn't have had yeah. them. I had all 24 of them. Yeah. And then I went and vomited them all up. Oh, and then I couldn't eat a mince pie for yeah. years. There's, <laughs> there's definitely when you're high, there's like food does taste fucking good. Yeah. It's but there's true. some stuff you just, some concoctions you put together it's and you're true. like, this is the best version of this that's ever happened. Yeah. And that that's the reason why I don't do it so often. Yeah. Because so I do, do, do immensely. I eat like the vape that we were watching, like, you know, land in bed watching stuff and the vape and I would just it was like no matter how much I tried not to want to go to the kitchen yeah. it was inevitable and then it was crisps and t- ham Crumbs. and mayonnaise and fresh it was just just exponential and then you're waking up the next day and you're just you can't move because you've yeah. eaten so much crap nah no bro you know? it is true what's your favourite food in general no, like if for a meal like if you were going out for a nice meal what would be the creme de la creme what you want like would you be thinking ah. Oh, I don't know, man. Like I said, like, where would I, would I eat a lot? Asian food, probably. Do you see, yeah. what's this fascination with Japanese tattoos, Asian food? You see, now, I didn't eat sushi for a long time into it. I certainly would. The two were de- definitely a separate discovery. Right. Um, I would go, I would eat quite a lot of a friend who owns Yugo. Have you, you ever eaten Yugo in the city centre? No. It's brilliant. Really, really good. It's sort of like, I don't like to say Asian fusion because it's right. not. Yep. Asian fusion per se, but it's definitely very Asian inspired. Right, I'm gonna have to. Um, try there's though. a couple of other restaurants that like that that I would go to, but food, food's become very, especially if you're eating out, it's becoming very, all melded into one thing really. Like you know, you know, obviously you got like Indian, Chinese, but it seems like when you go out now, everything's sort of like a combination of choices. Yeah. Everything's went tapasy. Yeah. You know, you used to go out and be like starter main course dessert. Now it's like small plate. Yeah. I'll try a bit of it, which is nice because yeah, you know, yeah. you could just have a little bit of everything. Yeah, I'd say I don't know. See, uh, I don't know. I don't like it like that. There's a spot I go to all the time, Tung Sing Chinese. Where's uh, that? In Carrick Fergus. All right, okay. Tung Sing, shout out to Tung Sing, and I get um, I get chicken chow mein with no onions, my fried rice. I like yeah. to mix the fried rice with the chow mein. Yeah, yeah. I do. Bro, yeah. Is that <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you know what it is? 
I used to work in a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. And people used to phone up and you said onions and order, can I get a chip, pea, gravy and onion with no vegetables? Yeah. And you'd be like, whoa. But it's a chip and gravy then, I don't know. clearly. Yeah, yeah, why are you asking for a chip and pea? <laughs> oh, yeah. no vegetables. No vegetables. No vegetables. Whoa, yeah. that's so like to, a red dog. Yeah, I, I think working in a Chinese restaurant for a long time when I was a kid, it didn't put me off Chinese food because I ate too, way, way too much of it to be yeah. cut off. But there's like, so much stuff on a Chinese menu that people don't bother even checking out. Yeah, it's true. You know, so... Bro, I'd be on the same. I worked with a Chinese. I was the delivery driver. Yeah, yeah. And it was the number one Chinese in Manchester, Hong yeah. Kong Chippy on Henrietta Street in Manchester. Best ever. And um, you're right. There was a fucking menu... Like about ten things, I used to just get half rice fried chips and curry, <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And then one time I tried the um, the kung po tofu. Oh yeah, kung po's good. Kung po yeah. tofu. I mean, again, tofu, tofu. I wouldn't eat tofu. I loved it so much. I I switched it up. I called it the kung fu topo. The kung fu topo, but yeah. that's special, bro. Like yeah. this, uh, that's a that's a far cry from chime with no onions. Yeah, I know. Like, it's a quite a big jump. Yeah, that's because I came back here. Like like I said, I just went to the tongue thing. And, and it's weird that I don't like onions. You know why, bro? I like I like my onions black. Yeah, like, you know burger, I mean? like, like burger van black. Yes. Like, where they're just... Yeah. So even if I was getting onions on a hot dog or something, I'd say make them black. Yeah, yeah. You with me? I want them crus- crusty, like black. I don't see, like, the onions you get in your chow mein. They look like big fucking... Yeah, they are big slime. Toenail yeah, clippings yeah, they or are. something. They totally can get the fucking away from me. I can't handle it. I'm just, I was just... As I've been chatting, I've been checking out your tattoos, actually. Yes. Um, what's the... There's, this is obviously a lot of Celtic-inspired Yeah, lookers and the Japanese thing. Is that Japanese? What is it? What is it? A samurai? Who is it? It is. That actually looks like... Is it? Is it a warrior of some nature? Yeah, it's yeah, a warrior. Yeah, yeah. I just picked it when yeah. I was young. Because I got my John Sue. And then when I was about 18, I just picked that it out. It actually of it. looks a little bit like the Monkey King. Donkey Kong? Mon- no, no, not Donkey Kong. Well, Monkey King. <laughs> I think that's what it is, actually, because he's got a staff. The Monkey King? The Monkey King, yeah. Definitely. That's what that is. What? Who? The Monkey King. No, who played him? Jackie Chan. Yeah, Jackie Chan That's right, he did. Uh, what was that movie called? I'm guessing The Monkey King. Golden movie. something. What was it called? I know the one you're talking the about. Of the King yeah. Sick. And, and it's not that old. Is? That film's not that old. Really, is it? But no, well, 10 years ago, maybe, or something. Yeah. And then I've got the... See the dra- this is the start of the dragon. Oh, see the, uh, yeah, yeah, see yeah. the tail here. And then the tail runs up, and then there's my big dragon. It's not finished yet, bro. Cool. Well, what do you think of the dragon face? No, that's really cool. Yeah, because really um, a lot of the dragons... Japanese dragons they look quite goofy yeah they do like I mean naturally big goofy dragons looks yeah. like a never ending story yeah. you know the big fella from that. yeah no they, de- they do and I think especially like some of the traditional uh, the stuff I do in Neo is a bit more like animated so they're a bit more right. westernly aggressive yes, yes. that's um, what I asked my cousin do you know my cousin she owns um, Inkwell sh- uh, tattoos and the studio in Newton Abbey I definitely recognise the name yeah she's called Gillian gr- Gillian Smith I recognise the name, yeah. Yeah, she um. So her brother, my cousin uh, Philip, he like plays all the instruments and everything, and he's naturally gifted at like everything. He can play every instrument, and he started tattooing from young. Yeah. I used to just fall asleep in his house. He had tattooed me, and I done my Genghis Khan on me, yeah. you know, and my big gorilla and everything. He'd just tattoo me all the time, and then he taught um Gillian how to tattoo. And then she set up her shop there, you right, know, okay. that's been her as well, cool. the, you know, book, like. So mine's a, a style of, like, that's the Alpha, Alpha and the Omega. Omega. Yeah, I recognise that. And then um, it was like a band. Funny enough, Philip tattooed this on me. This is the Celtic dog. Yeah. And I got that um, when my granddad died. And um, my dad seen it. But Philip, me and Philip sat up drinking. We were about three days, bro, on a mad bender, you know, my granite I hadn't slept in three days, just drinking constant and all. Philip tattooed me this and tattooed that and tattooed and I was falling asleep waking up and he was still tattooing me and all. And then my dad came in and went, I love that tattoo, I want it. But Philip, I want you sober for tattooing me. And then Philip was like, oh, all right then. And then Philip woke up sober, tattooed him upside down. <laughs> He, no, not me. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say yours is cool. when he, Yeah, no, yeah, when he's yeah. drunk, when he was drunk, he was incredible. Yeah, And then yeah, my dad yeah. said, I want you sober. And then sober, he done it upside down. I was oh, thinking, freak. it was funny. <laughs> but anyway, Philip never, like, um done, like, you know, worked at the shop. It was just Jillian there. Yeah. And then Jillian done most of my stuff, you know, for me. The Celtic's really nice. I like Celtic. It's not so, I used to do it years ago, and then 
actually on Wednesday last week, a guy from uh, Australia came over and somehow miscommunication thought was booked in for two days of Celtic. Right. And not Japanese. I don't know how it happened. Do you do Celtic as well? No, I only do Japanese. Right. And um, I enjoy drawing, like on the whist, like this here, for example. Yeah, I see like I drew, I drew all, that's all my own designs. Yes. So it's sort of, I don't know whether it is maybe the heritage well, um, it's exactly. I love that. I've got that tattooed on me. Yeah, it's sort of it a bit of a, a hybrid. It is a hybrid because yeah. the 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 face of the dragon is one hundred percent Japanese. Yeah, it's Japanese. Yeah. But then it's in a Celtic. It's similar shape. Yeah, it has the fundamental um, structure of yeah. traditional Celtic. So when the guy came in, you know, obviously it, it's not what I do, but <coughs> I just said, "Look, man, I'm actually if you're up for it, I'd be cooler just to draw it on freehand." So I did do. It. I do really Richie. enjoy it, and I, I, I wonder if. It is a subconscious of just the artistic heritage of Celtic here. Yeah. You know, like I do Japanese, but there's not any inspiration for Japanese iconography around. Like yeah. if I, I walk Botanic Avenue, I'm not looking at temples and like drawing us inspiration. Yeah. So my space is that inspiration. But the Celtic, it's everywhere. Yeah. You know, um, and I think it must just be deep set into my subconscious that when I go to draw it, I naturally understand it. Yeah, you know. Well, it's funny, isn't it? Because if you look at my sleeve, and this is I just designed it myself. Like I got that was my first tattoo when I was eighteen. Yeah. You know, just the way. The uh, yeah, and then I just blended it all on as it came on. But if you notice, it is it's like Celtic Japanese. Yeah. You know the I mean? sort of, and then it never got finished really. In the end. So where did the John Sue? Because that is it does sound in itself quite it is, like it's Chinese. So it was um, right, okay. When I was like, I got expelled from school when I was like 12 or 13 and started st like studying myself, you know, and all different, like I said about the, I read the Bible loads. Yeah. So I wanted to study <coughs> other ones that became fascinated with like the Code of the Samurai by Bushido. You know, that was the Japanese book that I yeah. loved. I was obsessed with it, especially the Forrest Whitaker movie and all. Remember Code of the Samurai? I've never seen it actually. Ghost Dog. I've never seen it. You've never seen Ghost Dog? No, I put this in my notes. Bro, it's one of the best movies of all time, bro. It's fucking incredible. Ghost Dog. Yeah, and he's like um, he, he's like a samurai, but a modern day one. And Forrest Whitaker is a samurai in it. Yeah, did you not know, bro? No. Bro, you'll love this. It's my favourite film. And no guess way. who does the um, soundtrack to it? Wu-Tang. No Rizzo way. And all. Riz is even in it. How long, how long ago was that, man? Um, oh, I think in the 90s. 90 what? 99. Yeah, bro, one of my favourite films growing up. It's not something I like would have imagined Forrest Whitaker being a samurai. No, but he's not a samurai in like feudal Japan or anything. He's um this is in New York City. Oh right, okay. And he goes around and he kills he's a hitman. He's a hitman right. for the mafia. And the mafia can only um speak to him via like a passenger pigeon. The release, like you know, a, a carrier pigeon. Yeah, yeah. And that's how to speak to him and he lives on top of a mountain um, top of a block of flats with his pigeons. And I loved it because it reminded me of my cousin. My yeah. cousin's a pigeon man and all, you know. And that's how he gets it. Uh, the, the, um, he goes on his contract killings, like, but he reads the code of the samurai in it. Right, and okay. I loved it then, and I was obsessed with it. So, so I, what, what, how old were you when that came out? I was, well, 15, I was born 15. in 87, so 87. Yes, it was about 12, 13. Yeah, yeah. And I loved it, bro. I was mad. Yeah. So I bought the code of the samurai. I was re reading it, loved it. And then I bought the art of war yeah. by Sun Tzu. Yeah, Sun Tzu. And then um, is that where is that like a play? That's where on it came from. Right, it's okay, literally where yeah, it came yeah. from. I loved the art of war. Studied it then, read it, and it was all like in we. It was all in like we. Yeah, like, broken up in very yes. like sort of pearls of wisdom. Yes. approach. Yeah. So I and that's why I just read all of it then and thought, oh, this is sick shit. And then I was reading about um how like political people from all different parts and all you know would um look into it and shit. Yeah. So or, you know and like I analyze it and study it. So I loved it. And then everyone used to call me like Big Johnson and all and Big John soon. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. just thought, oh, I'll just put a J there, John oh, soon. And I was like twelve, bro. Yeah. I was literally twelve. I called myself John Sue. Yeah. And I laughed because now I'm like a big fucking man and all and everyone's still calling <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, 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 and yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. a mad wee thing that we yeah. called him. Well, it's funny because in the car I googled like like just see what your actual name was because I didn't yeah. know is that like do you call people by that name? Yeah, that's what that's what everybody calls you, John Sue. That's what you go by. Yeah, not your normal, your actual name. Oh no, not everyone. Obviously, I mean people that don't know me. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then people, some people who do know me, but that's what they've just ever been introduced to me as. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I mean. Funny enough, my mates and all, it's um, Johnny Cash style as well. Like, my good mates, they all call me fucking Susie, you know? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, boy yeah, named yeah. Sue, you yeah. like me? And they'd all yeah. say, Sue, yo, Sue. Yeah. You know, we're big Sue. Well, when I, when I type that into Google, you know how Google 
it sometimes answers the question for you. But actually, it was later down. It shows you, oh, and one of the first one is what is John Tu's real name? Yeah. If you Google John Tu, it right. says what is John Tu's. I didn't know that. Yeah. So That's people, funny. people are wanting to know, man. Yeah, it doesn't well, even give Johnny, you a fucking answer either. Yeah, well, it's Johnny as well. Yeah. So my, wee, my song, We Johnny. It's funny, that, that's about me, and my name's Johnny Hamilton, you know, right, okay, that is yeah. my name, you have me. Talk about that in the Troubles album too as well, like, you know, I'm Wee Johnny, and, you know, my dad's David Hamilton and all the pr preacher, you have me. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's all about, like, our, our story, like, but it's funny, because I often think to myself too, I wonder if I would have got, like, more well-known if I had to just picked, like, a name like Wee Johnny. Yeah. Imagine Wee Johnny was my rap name, you know, but John Sue with a silent T. And no, all. I think John Sue carries a lot more weight to it. Of course, but yeah. like I said, it's a bit more, it's mad. A lot of people used to say, it's Chinese, nobody, why are you saying, do you yeah. think they're Chinese? You know, that's yeah, what I used yeah, to yeah, get, yeah, no, yeah. I was thinking it's mad. Yeah. You know, thinking about it now, like, abstract, but... Bro, like you say, you can't change it. Now I've got a tattooed on me for fuck's sake. Yeah, that's it. It's there. Young, you have me. Yeah. No, I think it. I think like from the very first time that I came across you, yeah, like I thought it was like a killer name. Like it has yeah. a lot of weight to it. And actually, to be honest, obviously when you think about it, it is obviously very easy and inspired. But it's, it's like most things, it suits you, and it certainly doesn't. I don't think of it as a as you being awake. And you know why that is? Probably because. I'm white and I do Japanese tattoos. Exactly. So yeah. it probably doesn't seem that surreal to me yeah. to have that like yeah. white dragon, you know. So and being there's Asian, a few you know. things as well why I call John Su. So first of all, you know, it's the hip hop thing of taking something and adding your own to it. Yeah. So it was Sun Su, but I'm Johnny, so I added my J. So it's not John Su, you yeah, yeah. me, and that's me and that style. And then I like the idea of the silent T, you know. It just was cool, you with yeah. me. And then it's the art of war. And that's what my music's always been about, even personal warfare, the troubles, anything. It's all about war. Yeah. You know, so and like an analysation of war. So it's like, yeah, man, it, it fits perfectly. Yeah. Um, and then it's funny, like um, I looked into it as well. It actually means in Chinese, John Su. It means to be a role model or an upright citizen. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't know that when I named myself. That's that, so that, the ladder you're working on. <laughs> Thank God I didn't mean fucking rice, <laughs> chips and curry. Anyway, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. But again, so it was funny, but... um. My, my dad's mate, funny enough, my dad was, um, you know, like a UVF man, um, one of his best mates, he was in jail with him, he was a UVF man himself, when he became a Christian in jail, he watched Ben-Hur in jail and became yeah. a Christian, no way. and then decided to become a missionary in Japan, yeah. Fuck, that's and he went to Japan, and for like, I think for the last 25 years, he was a missionary in Japan, most yeah. fluent Japanese, um, he published a book over there in Japanese. And that's the, mad. Have you ever seen the Japanese books? They're actually back yeah, to back front. Yeah, back to front. You're using the back. Yeah. So that, I've never even I've never heard of that guy at all. That's that's yeah. a pretty. That sounds like a pretty interesting story. Yeah, I'll tell you his name like off. Yeah, the, off the, camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Steep, like, uh, so that's no... interesting that your tattoos, I would say, are sort of have sort of like not so much loyalist overtones to them. Undertones. Loyalist. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you said your dad was in prison. Like this, I would say is quite a nationalist tattoo. Yeah, I would go as far as say it's quite a Republican tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that what? So is that? Listen, why is that compared to your upbringing? Is that something you just sort of like identify a bit more with the ideology uh, of it? Or so when you say loyalist to me as well, listen, this is the fascinating thing. You know, we moved to mainland Britain. Like we moved to we moved to Manchester. Yeah, and. Um, you were still a party, basically. Yeah, I, you're, yeah. I was Irish, and yeah. then there's I tried to say to them I'm I'm British and all, but they weren't yeah. having it. And these are British kids. These yeah. are kids who are British, and they're yeah, saying yeah. to me, "You are not. You are different." Yeah, you know. So I accepted that then. Yeah. So did my dad then. My dad accepted it and said, "You know, it's true. Like you know, yeah. there is a, a thing like that." So Ireland, that's where I come from. I come from this island. You live me. Oh, yeah. Listen, I completely agree with you. Like, that's something that um, is as I've travelled. And I've drove from Belfast down to Dublin many times. Yeah. There isn't uh, like a, there isn't. There's any, no distinguish, distinguishable no, you know, geographical thing anyway. Yeah, exactly. Sure. You yeah. know what I mean? And I don't believe in man-made borders in general. That's why I've also got this fella tattooed on me. Do you know who that is? Genghis Khan. Yeah. And I believe Genghis Khan is very demonized in uh, in modern history. Genghis Khan didn't believe in borders and he didn't believe in cities. He said humans shouldn't be living in cities. Cities aren't fortresses. Cities are prisons. Yeah. And he and he proved that as well. And he wasn't like a he wasn't a dictator either. He said you can worship whatever god you want. Genghis Khan worshiped the great wolf in the sky. You know, and yeah. he says, but his sons and his grandsons could study Buddhism, Hinduism, um, Christianity, um, Islam. 
they were free to study whatever they wanted and call themselves whatever they wanted. He didn't care about that. What he cared about was this concept of borders and rulers and lands and yeah. people saying, this is my land and you can have up until the river and then that's your land and this is a different country. Now, fuck off. It's all a load of bullshit. It's all man-made conformities. Yeah. It's nonsense. Well, no, I certainly agree with that. Um, I mean, even, even if you're standing in certain areas with a passport waiting to cross a border, like, obviously, you know, and the... For security reasons, it is important, you know, geopolitically speaking. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if you wind the clock back, it, so much of the social constructs are just hilarious. Yeah. And people just sort of went with them. But, uh, no, I'm the same. Like, when I travel, as a tattooist, he used to always assign me with a flag. And it was either a tricolor or a Union Jack. And I never really was happy with either of them. Because yeah. um, being from the north of Ireland, certainly... Uh, you know, like you said, being an, uh, uh, ge- geographically speaking, a whole island in the north, it has its own identity. Um, it's one of the reasons why there's the hand and the shamrock on yeah. the bottle. Yes, I that love there's, that. There's I a shared, that. there's a shared heritage in the north that you, if you take two people from um, both sides of the community in the north, they have more in common with each other than if you were to get to put them... The from guy in the North was a guy from Dublin and the guy from London. Yeah. That shared heritage in the North. So I would say I'm Northern Irish. Yes. And it's, and that's still not even trying to, like, differentiate. It's, I am differentiating only because of the fact that, you know, you can't not be proud of the yeah. progress of the, the communities here? in the North. Yes. Um, but with it, it interfaces with cross-community work, sports, um, everything, I guess, everything but straight-up politics, because I think politicians like to get a pat on the back but the people are doing it anyway like yes. you know, for all those years we had no executive you know you drive anywhere the city still keeps getting built people are still businesses are opening entrepreneurs are still tr- are, are m- figuring things out communities are still working together and politicians I d- like I don't know how the ruse isn't up yet yeah. like for years they haven't sat and we're still getting on and progressing as a society yeah. without them so I um, despise politicians bro politicians oh, I, without are... a shadow of doubt my, my, I have to be careful with my kids because you know, you're driving in and there's just placards and, you know, well, Dad, what's that? What's that? And you just, you don't want to be like yeah. downloading all your yeah. like negativities on them. But you do try to say like, listen, apart from obviously, you know, I'm guessing there's a lot of grassroots, small independents that do have their heart in the right place. But the big, like the big political yeah. institutions I've are never just voted. complete. I've honorable. never voted in my life. I don't vote either. And, yeah. I, and I don't even have any... I'm proud that I don't. Yeah, vote. I'm proud that I, I don't. And this vote. idea that you, yeah, yeah. oh, you should, you're, you're part of the problem. Yeah, like, no, I'm not. Off. It's not. Yeah. I don't like football. Therefore, exactly. when the scores come out on a Sunday, I don't give a fuck. Exactly. It doesn't trigger me. Exactly. I don't get upset by someone winning or losing. I've just, I, I just took myself out of the equation. Yeah. There's nothing about that that represents anything Thing. that I feel. Exactly. So why would I get involved in exactly. the process? Exactly. You, you don't know these people. No. You don't know. You know what I mean. And you know, all you do know is that um, a politician is a hundred percent a liar yeah, yeah. pretty much by definition yeah, yeah. this is what they do and the government is a pack of politicians it's a pack of liars yeah so uh, no time for none of them yeah it's con- it's constant i think came out today and um i seen about infosys yeah do you know about infosys no yeah. this is like on uh, just just came out today you know the warning system that came on your phone the other day that yeah. w- warning that came on everybody's mobile phones that mm. piece of um that deployment of that software or whatever was outsourced um, to Infosys, and that's Rush, um, Sunni Rushek, I can never pronounce his name, um, family's yeah, yeah. company. That prime minister. You know I mean? Prime minister, yeah. yeah. The, 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 he's, yeah. It's, his, it's his family's company, or certainly yeah. I think it's his father in law's company, Infosys, and they are the ones that, you know, taxpayers spend a million a pound to get this, in, this information blasted through their phones. So, like, there's no way politicians aren't self serving. Wow, and I didn't even know oh, that. Are you talking about that thing? That the, thing that came up warning, yeah, testing yeah. the yeah. thing. Did that happen on your phone? Oh, it happened on Sunday. I screwed the crap. Did it come on me. your phone? It yeah. didn't come on mine. No, I mean, I was driving. It was my girlfriend. Just big shout to Caitlin. You know what she done? Off. She found out about it and then found out how to turn it off in oh, your beforehand. settings. Yeah. So we just went in the emergency set. Totally. Emergency alert. I would say turn it off. off. I mean, the nukes are going to come. I don't want to know about it five seconds beforehand. Yeah. I want to be sitting watching a movie. Yeah. And then just a blast of white light. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go, err, 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 and then the white light. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. God's honest truth. You know, if there wasn't an option that I could have turned it off, and that was happening to every single phone in the world, I'd have to get rid of my smart. I'm tempted to anyway, bro. I'm get tempted. Rid of your smartphone? To, they're dangerous, bro. Yeah. It's like the fucking. 
bro, you know about Black Mirror, don't you? Yeah. Like, and that's what the, you know, the, the series, the Black Mirror, yeah. and what it is. Like, that is a Black Mirror, and that's what we're all doing. Like, I, I'm involved, bro. I do stir up my phone and all constantly. Yeah, like, yeah, we yeah. all do. Yeah. You know, and it's like, if we're not stirring at our phone, we'll stir at the big Black Mirror yeah. that's up on the wall. Like, our whole lives are based around staring at fucking screens. Yeah. That's why I love tattooing, and I love fucking making music. I'm a leather worker. I do leather work and stuff as well. I love anything that's fucking... Not, yeah, it gets not, you out of that, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't involve yeah. you on a fucking screen. Yeah, you, you know? definitely, it allows you to explore yourself and sort of like yeah. get lost in your own thoughts and just sort of create something. I think like creating things is, is it's in her, it's in everybody's, you know, it's, we do it at a young age, yeah. but it's something that's taken away from us as, as, as we get older. The amount of people I meet who say, I used to love drawing when I was younger and blah, blah. But when you're a kid, everybody just loves scribbling and colouring in. Yeah. And just because you are making your mark, that's taken away um, at a base level for uh, as creatives, but also for thought. So many, no, very few people get to be them, you know, to get to be the true expression of themselves. Yeah. You know, it's just layers and layers of, of conformity, yeah. rules, regulations, legislation, paperwork, yeah. you know, all that type of shit. And it's actually one of the things, you know, coming likes of ourselves are having a conversation we're not answerable to anybody yeah there's not like oh shit someone's gonna you know yeah say you can't say that yeah. you know i am actually answerable i want to get in trouble when mom says uh, this listen <laughs> but your mum needs to understand too you were never like no she that. probably will she knows deep down that's where my head's at 100 so. and that's what it is it's about free will and all you know yeah. but here what i was noticing about it's like see my tattoos like you say bro i've got the japanese and the, the celtic and then you want to see my leg piece it's like a big maori piece I love the Maoris and all too. Yeah. And I wanted like all that. And I've got like the American fucking cartoon and Genghis Khan, Ireland tattoo. This is a fascinating one as well. I had 144 tattooed yeah. before my wee daughter, Amelie, was born. Mm -hmm. And then she ended up being born on the 14th of the 4th at 1440, weighing four pounds, four ounces on the fourth day of the week, the 104th day of the year. Yeah. I would that? say that was a bargain. <laughs> you only had to get three letters on you. Steve, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Alert, you know what's right? funny? Whenever years ago we used to do like old English, yeah. it was by the letter. Yes. And people used to come in and be like, want to get my girlfriend's name? What's her, what's her name? Rebecca. And you tell them 10 times for 15 to go, ah, just give me an R. An yeah. R will do. <laughs> so yeah. save some money. Sick, of course. Damn right. Is your yeah. course. So that's what I wanted to ask you. Like, look, I love. Like I'm, I like drawing as well, and I love, I, I love doing Celtic. It's even doing like you know the um the leather work. Yeah. And I would make like Celtic bags and all. You with me? And then I might do. I want to carve out a big dragon. You with me? And I carve out a big sick dragon, and then I might want to do something western or something. But that's what I wanted to figure out with you. What what is what what what's captivated you to say just Japanese? That's it. You know what I mean? Like, why not? Do, wouldn't you enjoy? Do you not enjoy doing Celtic work? I think it's it's more the the utilizing the full body as a as canvas. one piece. Guys, I'm, I'm, am I blocking myself behind this mic? No, is that all right? I just became yeah. a bit conscious that no, I was sort no, of lazily time. sitting behind the microphone. <laughs> um, so, so the it's, body's a it's, canvas. Yeah, the body's a canvas. So it's the full utilization of the body. Yeah. Japanese traditionally was the only style that you would have not the only one, but historically speaking. Yeah or some tribal, where they'd be utilizing the full body. So it was the wow factor of the full body. Yeah. I also was really into Japanese art. So my grandmother collected antiques, so I'd have been going around antique fairs and sort of looking at <coughs> paintings and ceramics, porcelain, phoenixes, dragons, and all that. So all of these things were sort of coming together at the same time. It yeah. wasn't a straight up conscious decision to just do Japanese. And then working in a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. Do you course. remember you used to get like the bamboo, the, the new year you got a bamboo um, scrolls for the yeah. calendar. Well, I used to always collect those and they always had cool dragons on it um, and sort of zodiac signs of animals. So I think all of those just, it's like anything organically comes together. Yeah. It certainly wasn't a decisive, you know, I'm only doing yes. Japanese. It was when I decided to try and specialize, yeah. but that was the thing that I was always into. So if I was drawing anything, it was always going to be Japanese. And yeah. I was always big. Big, yeah. Big. And then at that time, people weren't getting big tattoos. Of course. You know, it obviously. was still piece, piece, yeah. and then joined all together. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I, I, like I used to buy A3 pads of paper. Yeah. And the guy used to go, why are you drawing so big? No one's going to come in and get that. Yeah. And in one second. In one, yeah. yeah. Or even commit to that. Yeah. M many, nobody thought about getting a tattoo done in five or six goes. Yes. You went in, you picked a picture, and it went on. It was done and dusted in a yeah. couple hours. Um, 
so this the whole process changed to this, you know, selling people and trying to get them to commit to large work. And then actually here, the hardest part was getting men to even conceive getting their ass tattooed as That's part what I was of, gonna ask you. of yeah. the thing. Yeah, like a lot of a lot of men were like, I just, I just want to stop at the, yeah. at the belt. Yeah. You know, the, 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 I don't want to get my bum tattooed. No, and you're like, anyway. yeah, but yeah, yeah, not by a guy. And, and I'm like, listen, you have to. Yeah. And I remember, like, even now, guys come in with all different manner of contraptions to cover themselves, like homemade thongs. Like, guys come in with boxers where, like, the ass cheeks just sort of cut out and they're all raggedy. Oh, and you're like, like sake, man, like, you're, get, you're taking it off because I, I have know. to draw. Of course, you're you know, doing you're in the way. Is. Of course. Yeah, bro. Most people don't care. They know what they're in for. But yeah. some people, like, it is. What quite about a big the Maori thing. tattoos? Do they have their asses tattooed as well? Yeah, they would have a sort of a scalped sort of design that would go yeah. down over the bum cheeks. Sort of cover that area because I'm worried because I've started my fucking Maori on both legs and I want the shorts, yeah, like bam bam. You with me, bro? He's my favorite fighter, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. you know, the shorts, but I didn't know what the, 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 yeah, the, the, the I mean, yeah, well. yeah, they do. I, thought, I mean, you can't just be. I'd rather I mean, you just could just have two big white circles. Nah. <laughs> you know, like, I'm going to get that done someday. I'm telling you, bro, I don't know about that. But this is what I wanted to ask. So, if I, like, my back isn't done, but if we were going to do a big back piece. Would you outline my whole back in one? Oh, yeah. One sitting? Yeah. Wow. And how long would you spend um, per person on a, like, it's usually, a day? It can be, depending on the size, it can be seven, eight hours. I mean, the, the, the longest, as far as backs are concerned, yeah. was the two guys from Australia. Yeah. Who just before lockdown, both came over from Australia and did a day each alternatively for seven days about 13, 14 hours each day right. and from start to finish by the end of that time had their full backs done. Wow. The other, Holy the shit. Full thing. The other guy... Are is, you joking? No, I'll, I'll show you a, f a photograph. It's um, obviously, <sighs> if everybody's watching this, you're not going to be able to see this, but... Um, Whoa, that is intense. Oh, man. yeah. And like this guy here, the he And what his, about their like, healing? No, the, what, the, does it heal? Oh, yeah. Like That guy did three days of colour in one go. That whole thing was coloured in three days. Right, but the thing is, after I would like, so say if you tattooed this on me, right? Yeah. You see the next day, that would be scabbed, so it would be extra painful to get it tattooed, no? No, it's not too bad. Once you get started again, you sort of get back into the flow of it. Yeah. Those, that's the two brothers there. My goodness, And that's completely, bro. you know, like no, full is, coverage, no messing around. Yeah, that is deep. <clears throat> and what does... I'm like, do do they give you f free reign to just design what you're gonna do on their back? Yeah, those guys were a bit more um particular about what they wanted. There's a lot of meaning behind that. The red envelopes uh, from Chinese sort of culture, the the monkey king that's in that one. Certain symbolism. The same with this guy. He wanted um different a sort big of horse. No, did he yeah. said he wanted a that's horse? A, a monkey king on horseback with um the food dogs sort of either side and different cultural. Um, significant pieces from his culture that he wanted. Yeah. No, that's because those guys are um, Asian. So yeah. obviously they're really, really, you know, that's their culture. So they have a lot more what they want to be truly represented. If I'm tattooing um, Westerners who are, it's more aesthetics. Yes. It's just about looking cool. I want to be yeah. a cool dragon. I want to be cool. Yeah, There's yeah, less, yeah. Um, less sort of, like, there's, that was all lined in two consecutive days. My goodness, bro. <coughs> and then, like you said, it's sort of like a full body. Set, oh, yeah, it's full body. So yeah. when you get, like, a client, are you looking to say, I want a fresh canvas, pretty much? You do. I mean, you, most people, more so now, as when I, when I was younger, a lot of clients who were older, so they already had maybe a sleeve or a leg piece or trying to incorporate stuff. <laughs> but now, you know, over the past seven, eight years, maybe ten years, a lot more people are coming for a bodysuit from the get-go. Yeah. That's their plan. Like, Kim has been with me, that guy there. He's done easily three, four hundred hours of tattooing over the past eight years. My goodness. Yeah, so it's a massive bro. commitment, financially and, you know, obviously, the yeah, flights, just hotels. The yeah, um, And it's pretty much every piece that you see there is of that same um, approach. Yeah, Fully outlined yeah. in one go. Uh, yeah. and then back and, and do you just sort of like you design all of them then all right, of them well? yeah some of them are freehand directly on the skin with pens other ones do like this one will take more time because it's a lot of fine detailed um, stuff that'll be the design will be done then and put on the back uh, so like it, the thing is 
you know, 20, 15 years of doing specifically Japanese, you know, you're, you're set for life as far as like job satisfaction. Of course. You know, like you're, you're forever, there's an, an endless supply of imagery, yeah. an endless supply of um, colors and all of those combinations that every day is really still, I love doing it. Yeah, of you course. You know, still love doing it. Have you ever done a, like, have you ever made like a documentary or anything? We, I actually started filming the documentary last year. I put it on hold because the just the logistics of getting people together. Yeah. Um, we were meant to do it. There's, I think there's seventy back pieces. Yes. It's full backs, and just trying to get them all together. Some of them are, like, I was in Frankfurt two weeks ago, and two of my guys, one from Brazil and one from um, Calvin, weirdly, were both in Frankfurt, and I didn't even take the time to get a photo or just having such, such good t- fun yeah. hanging out and chatting yeah. and then when we left I was like ah, oh, the chances of getting those two guys at the same time is really rare oh, so the, the, for the documentary it's more about the people not me it's more about the work they're getting and the commitment yeah. that the, they're doing you know yeah so and then did you so did you when you were starting off tattooing as well and you you had the fascination with the Japanese then were you like constantly in your own time just drawing these J- Japanese styles yeah totally and just like drawing the different warriors and looking at the different yeah. pieces and I set myself a challenge of drawing a dragon every night for a hundred days that was the first wow. thing that by the end of that I really knew the anatomy of dragons sick and then after that I would have had a little books that would have just been They've seen where you doodle very quick and handy, waves, um, koi, and it'll just you just become it. You build that arsenal of images that you know that become like your ingredients. So, you know. would you ever make your own tattoo book? There, there is. There's some stuff's been published. Usually, right. it's part of a collective. I think I have the, the studios coming down, thousands of drawings. And that's no exaggeration. And I think at some point I would sit down and curate them. Pick the best and ones. Put and put them in and them. just put them in a book. That would be epic, bro. I think that's like an end of career thing. Because even though I've been doing it 20 years, my superiors and peers are easily 15, 20 years older than me. Yeah. So I'm still, in terms, in Japanese terms, like quite fresh. Yeah, you're a youngster. Yeah. You're I've been young fortunate pup. enough to be sort of brought into that community and yeah. be able to work alongside them. But you still have to like tip your hat and if I was to come out with a book and a document to make this dude this not yet you're not, just yes. not yet I mean like yes you're the top of what that it doesn't matter though within yeah, the still, global community yeah, it's like course. you know you gotta just take yeah, your time, take your time you know, of course um, because and like, like I said there's plenty it would, it would be premature even for me because there's yeah. still so much work to do yeah you know, so. Sick. and that's the thing about art and as well the older you get the better you'll become well yeah you know fundamentally hopefully yeah yeah that's no it. definitely have you ever been to Japan oh yeah I got I've been 10 but 10 times 10 times yeah the first when I was getting my sleeve done I was there every other week I flew out to Shige in Yokohama wow. I flew out every other week got the arm done Flew over a couple of times uh, with my wife and the kids, and then the last time I was there was an in and out. Literally, I right, I think I was in Japan for fourteen hours uh, for an art exhibition, uh, and flew back home again straight afterwards. So it's, I, but even with all that, I've only been outside Tokyo once, because that's where I've had to go for getting tattooed, and I've got a lot of stuff out of there. It's very much like it's a it's a country you could spend exponential time exploring different regions and different areas but Tokyo I only could have only scratch the surface and that's 10 11 trips you know uh, will you be back oh definitely like if for, for me that does that like that's the that's the epicenter of the culture of what I you know honestly take from I get or draw inspiration from certainly um so going there is it's like charging your it's like plugging yourself back in again mm-hmm. and because of COVID and being away and all that type of stuff I, the travel wasn't as frequent and I definitely feel like I'm drifting away I need to get back and just plug myself into that yeah. and just like that's sh- like your source of sh- real sh- cool yeah. Yeah. inspiration oh totally yeah like I mean Sick. everything you do and everywhere you go it's just all of that stuff is there and you need to get back to, in fact anyone that does Japanese tattooing and hasn't been there I would say that's like the mecca the, it, it's how, how, it's like being a, a French chef I'm or open a pizza yeah. shop and never be in Italy or never yeah. be in France. Like if you have, haven't been there, you need to stop doing Japanese yeah. and go there and find out what it's fundamentally about and you know and apply that, not the other way around. You know, yeah. Um, 
No, but I love the place. It's it's fascinating. Like. And have you read the Code of the Samurai? Have you ever read that? I have the they have the Bushido book. Yes, um, it's actually a version of it that's um, linked in with tattoos by uh, Horiyoshi. So it's a couple yes, of pieces. Yes, that's the one I have. Yeah, so yes. it's basically full of body suits and talks about different the, the different codes. So. Um, I haven't read that was I think it's by Schaefer book or whatever. I've read that years ago. I have about I must have fifteen copies of The Art of War. Clients have bought it over the years, yeah. and I've just it's like thankfully it is in those doses of uh, pearls of wisdom. Yeah. You can sort of you know do not do, you know, like it's in it's bite size, of but course. I've never sat down and fully you know read the whole thing. Yeah, when uh, you said the the there was pieces of the Code of the Samurai then that is related to like body suits. Yeah, that book in particular, um, because elements of it has been applied visually. I think the book Whoa. covers it. And it in tattoos. Wow. Yeah. So it's fascinating as well that what I loved about the Code of the Samurai, it's quite very similar to the Sermon on the Mount by Jesus. All right, okay, yeah. Like you read it and it's very, very similar. Yeah. You know, for example, it says about, you know, looking after orphans and widows and, you know, and like the, the fascinating thing about the the Japanese, like the samurai culture as well, it's all about humility, respect and honour. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you know the thing that I find fascinating as well, even more so, it's like gives me goosebumps talking about, the thing with Christianity I struggle with, where they say, you know, they'll sacrifice my innocent son for our sins. Yeah, yeah. Like, the samurai were the opposite. If yeah, I yeah. If I fucking sinned against you, bro, or I the, failed, yeah, I'll, I'll, lie on my, I'll sacrifice myself. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I would expect. If you yeah. came to me and said, Johnny, I've fucked up and I've done something terribly wrong. Don't worry, I've got this wee innocent thing that I'm going to slit and kill. Yeah. I'd say, don't <coughs> kill that That, that follows through the whole New Testament, or the Old Testament with sacrificial animal yeah. sacrifice. Yeah. Actually, I find that quite interesting that, that obviously, if you, you know, if you look at, like, um, satanic stuff, yeah. they always talk about, like, Oh, the like animal sacrifice, but actually it was like completely in the Old Testament. So animal sacrifice was yeah was you know part of that whole yeah um, and human sacrifice. Yeah. I don't even like to talk about that, but that's quite real, yeah. especially in the Bible. Too. Well, it's one of the things I like about you know Japanese um, imagery and mythology. It's nearly all positive. Yeah, you know, there's a, there's a positive attributes to it all. Yeah, and there's very little, even though the imagery can be quite aggressive and scary. And look, look to us like oh, it's very evil. Yeah. But even skulls, everything's got a positive um, attribute to it for the most part. Yeah. So it's it's one of the things why I think people in the West also like getting tattoos of it, particularly samurais. Yeah. Because it it has all those cult, like honor, respect, loyalty, all of those things, you know, which are definitely like lacking La in society. Of course. Big time, you know? Especially in Western society, but oh, it's totally. the complete opposite. Yeah. You know, like that's what I mean. That's what I love about um like Japanese, you know, culture in general. It's all about, you know, you're thinking about your family, you know, like how this is going to, you know, it's very, very, like, based on honour. Yeah. You know, and I love that. It's funny because it's not today, you know, this is, it's, if anything, it's actually in opposition. Against oh, totally, that, it is. Like, I mean, in the, in the simplest day-to-day -day things, if you're on public transport in Japan, anyone that's remotely older, you have to give a seat up to them. Of course. Um, you just don't sit on your phone. You yeah. certainly wouldn't hear music bla blurring out. You go into a shop, the person who works in the shop's going to give you like a pretty, you know, official greeting. Yeah. The transaction of money and everything is very, like if in business, if somebody hands you their business card, you take it with both hands mm -hmm. and like you really do read it and you yeah. make sure you make a conscious effort to put that away in yeah. your wallet respectfully. Here, be like, I cheers. You wouldn't even look at it, you're sticking your back pocket. Yeah. That is like, you know, you just yes. don't do that. This, just those traditions that are upholding those values. Yeah. Um, sometimes it can be a bit tiring if you travel there because yeah. you really, like you have to subscribe to them, but it's very um, therapeutic, not therapeutic, but it, once you're there and you get into the flow of it, and also, they don't talk shit. Yeah. Like, if it's not worth saying, they just don't say it. Yeah. It's a very quiet culture. We're yeah, the opposite. Militant. It's just like, it's, I know. Bulk. It, and yeah. I'm the worst for it. Like, I talk shit all the time. Yeah. But it's really <laughs> like, it has to be, if it's not worth saying, it's just, yeah. they don't say it. So my, my one of my best mates, I uh, grew up with in Manchester, he was like, um, he became a teacher and he, he went over to China and became a teacher in China. And he said it like blew his mind, you know, the, the difference, like, you know, yeah. and, he said he wasn't like he said the, the teaching in 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 England, seventy or eighty percent of it is trying to control the class. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. says in China it's like yeah. the opposite. There's zero yeah. controlling the class. They're controlling themselves. Yeah. And he said it was 
it was interesting because it was very like just surreal to him. Yeah. Said it was surreal, you know, and they, even like the way they treated him and all, they treated him like a like a king. Yeah. You know, and it was like, he just said it's completely surreal. Well, the society, I mean, I don't want to sound so pessimistic to say society is fucked, but it's pretty close to it. Yeah. You know, you only, it's just a, it's just a wind up spring, a powder keg of like where everyone's just, you know, you just scratch the surface and there's just conflicts in opinion, conflicts in ideas, conflicts in, in every sort of thing. And it, it's quite exhausting. Like today I went into the shop and then it's not obviously not conflict and there's a kid who must have been six. It's like, all right, go ahead there, wee lad. And you're like, what? I don't know, what? Like, I'm 40 years old. Yeah. But it's just the, the, the respect it's, for elders and yeah, all that. Like, I, I actually looked forward to being called Mr. Crooks when I was young. I thought, what's going to, you know, will I be called Mr. Crooks when I got older? I know my friends, my kids' friends just call me Chris. Yeah. They go, I don't know. Really like that? I'd like yeah. to just just for a wee bit call me Mr. Because we're not the old school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Like, when you got older, like you would have been Mr. Crooks yeah. in your suit, yeah. Mr. Crooks. And I would. I could never I mean? call my dad any of my friends' dads by their first name. I don't know. I know what you're saying. Weird. I'd always. But it was funny because I had two grannies, my dad's mum and my mum's mum. Now my dad's mum, I called her Granny Hamilton. Yeah. You with me? I yeah, was yeah. my granny Hamilton. And then my mum's mum was my granny Betty. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And it was because that's how she said as well, I'm your granny Betty. Yeah, Whereas yeah, yeah. my other one was like, this is Mrs. Hamilton. Oh, a bit even more like, proper. They would also like, say, it's just like respect. It yeah, was yeah. like, I can't even despise. And she wasn't like a snobby woman or not. She yeah. wasn't. Like I said, it was just a real respect thing. Or like, yeah. weird. Kind of, yeah, no, totally. You know, it is weird that like, but um, it definitely has gone out the window. Like, And that's the thing about uh, Japanese culture. It hasn't. It stayed very much... You know, like pure. Yeah. You know, I love that. Uh, did you ever see The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a belter. That's yeah, one of yeah. my favorite films, bro. Yeah. And it is quite gripping, isn't it? Because yeah. it shows you as well, like how they came over and destroyed it, like again. It was like, who was that that came over? It, it was a it was, Japan. It, there was it was he was a, a part of an American faction yeah because it's like the West um, again yeah. wasn't it like, it's weird because it's a time in history that you don't really think of that yeah. the, the American army were involved yeah. in, in the Japanese and, conflict yeah, it's nuts. or something with colonial I honestly can't remember the full premise of it but he was there as a representative yeah. certainly uh, of the American military and they're destroying the ja there's just basically the premise of the film is they're destroying the fucking yeah the, the, the last the part of that culture yeah. yeah well it's funny like being someone who does Japanese tattooing, certainly within that um, community, those things like honor and respect and loyalty, or and even within tattooing in general, I still try and hold on to them as much as possible, especially around peers, people within the industry that have been around for a long time. You know, you're you're trying to keep those attributes. Whereas, see, with the whiskey, <laughs> yes, that's just like. All gloves are off. Hospitality, like it's ironically called hospitality, and it's the most inhospitable thing ever. Yeah. Like there's nothing. There's like if you have got if you try to bring honor and loyalty and integrity into products and branding, yeah. you're wasting your time. Yeah. And I find that probably the hardest part of it. Yeah. That nothing's. There's just you know you have a conversation, and there's no there's no gentleman's agreement anymore. There's no handshake. It's all very like. It's all just who's a, you know who. It's all profit. Yeah. It's just profit. Yeah. And what you can't make profit out of things like honor and loyalty, because yeah. it's not built into that system. And where it's inherently with, it, with that, I find it. I find it hard. I find it hard talking about branding and product because these are just things that come naturally to me. Yeah. Not, it's not. It wasn't a contrived decision. It was just very organic. You know. Yeah. It's deep, bro. I love it. Did you know? So what is this? Is this um. Is this like uh, Irish whiskey then? Uh, yes, yeah, so this is a this is um, the backstory of it is I used to make um, moonshine in the house. Right. Patching, but yeah, patching patch a name moonshine and na by nature because of the ingredients. Yeah. So I used to watch a lot of like moonshine and like things on YouTube and growing up in the states, that whole Americana vibe. I just sort yeah. of was really into it. So I did it and messed around for a bit. And then people were messaging me on social media saying like, oh, where can I buy it? And I'm like, I don't sell it. I just, I'm only having a bit of crack. And um, it just evolved to being a legitimate, I'm just noticing, is that what you cover still? No? No. Uh, just, yeah, it became like a, I don't know 
not at all. Because um, yeah, so. I label each of these myself and, wow. and polish them. That's why I just I thought I was just admiring how, how beautiful it is. I've never seen a whiskey bottle so yeah, beautiful you, in my life. And it's like all embroidered. Yeah, it's like a, it's embossed metal. So yeah, those labels are metal, metal. Um, which is like for the top label, not very practical, but it looks the part. <coughs> this is finished in PX Sherry, which ah, is I very, just noticed yeah, very sweet. Um, Single barrel, flavor small profile. batch, bottle number 35 of 209. Yep. Barrel number. What's that in them barrel? Barrel number one of two, so it's out of two different barrels. Wow. And then you've got the the clover and the red hand. I yep. love that, bro. Absolutely love it. And how, how when, when, uh, that's what I wanted to ask you. How did, so you were making the potion and the and the moonshine? Yep. And the, they're obviously a clear spirit. They're yes. just unaged. Yeah. And then I started messing around with aging them in small barrels. Yeah. Um, really just for the crack. And like, it started looking and smelling and tasting like whiskey, and that was really it. Fuck off, And bro. then, I, I, because people were asking me about it, I decided to contact a few distilleries to see if they would make it for me or if I could sort of get into it, you know, more um, officially. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it's heavily, heavily um, moderated and, you know, legislated it's alcohol. Mm -hmm. Like, this little thing here, this is, like, that basically is your duty stamp, so that that is the official... Because a large proportion of the pro of the value of it goes to HMRC, so you have to be very above. Everything has to be your paperwork has to be on point. Yeah. Everything, all that type of stuff. So, um, that's why it's it's a slow process. It's an expensive process as well. But it's cool to get something out on the marketplace. It's really fucking cool, bro. So that's amazing, bro. And how old is it then? So that one's only about four and a half year old. So it's eighteen months in the PX Sherry and. Three, just over three years um, prior to that. Here, I love the way this is metal as well. Yeah, watch you don't cut your... Do you want to take that off? No, I was going to... Well, I'm going yeah, to try it. off there. Just watch you don't cut your finger. Yeah, I'm just saying I love the way it's all metal as well, bro. It's really yeah. cool. Like, that is class. I'm going to put it back on. So this is... Um, this is the Dragon Claw whiskey. I love the whiskey. And it's a very sweet whiskey, you see? Yeah. Which obviously... Would you ever do many cups? Um, that's the way to do it. Serving suggestions. <laughs> it's really smooth, I think. You like it? I love do you, it. Do, would you say? Because obviously you were saying earlier, you um typically prefer like a Johnny Walker, more maybe sort of smoky. Yeah, period. but I'll tell you what it reminds me of a wee bit as well. I um, I got a twenty-one-year-old uh, Glen Fittick mm -hmm. one time, and it was stored in rum caskets. Yeah, yeah. And this is similar. It's got that, like you say, a nice wee sweetness, but it's not too much. Yeah. It's really well, nice. Well, the one, the one prior to that was a rum flavor, or a rum finished whiskey. Um, and the first one was, the. this is the, definitely the best way to drink this. Just put some ice cubes in your mouth. <laughs> Just mix it in your mouth. It is absolutely delicious, bro. Yeah. No, it's cool. I'm glad you like it, man. I love it, It's bro. probably my favorite out of the three, so out of the three releases, it's probably my favorite. Uh, there's another one coming out at the end of this year. Then the la another one at the start of next year and then that's the end of this special edition and next year is the main release of the 30 you know like the typically price point whiskey yeah and there's a lot of that coming out and that'll be sort of more everywhere you know all. i'm actually shocked at how nice it is oh that's cool i could drink that whole bottle <laughs> good a couple stuff. of spliffs yeah, yeah. a couple of spliffs in fact you know what I might go home and do that I'll ring you yeah, tonight yeah, like yeah, that yeah, Chris yeah. I love your whiskey <laughs> and, they are sponsor and you're sponsored um, the Whiskey and White yeah, podcast yeah Tony and Tommy yeah. I had Tommy on yeah. last he was my last guest I must say like they are the like the best ambassadors you could possibly have I mean like it's non-stop like they yeah. did a, a show on uh, Trump came out holding the bottle. I'm sure everybody else, I'm sure people go on the podcast. Yeah. And they spend five minutes going about it. And I can see their guests going, Fuck, yeah. I mean, tone Close. it down. But this super supportive. <laughs> yeah, super, super supportive. Bro, it's <coughs> legendary and it's perfect for them as well, like you say, because Whiskey and White, their name of the show. Yeah, yeah. And then they've got a Belfast brand of, who do you think you are? Conor McGregor, bro? I know. I don't know. It's <laughs> it I'm telling you this now. I'm just going to tell you straight up. This is way better than proper. Trail. I think it is better no, than proper as well. Well, no, I'm just yeah. telling you the God's on the street. Yeah, I don't yeah. want McGregor coming for me now. <laughs> but um, Dragon Claw's the way, bro. That yeah. is special, bro. Thank you, man. And I love the fact that it's like a, 
the Northern Ireland style as well, with a shamrock and the red hand and all. Well, yeah, that's something I wanted to do. I, I mean, love that. Like, obviously, you know, a lot of the new whiskies in the north, the, it being Irish whiskey, and we've talked about it already, of course it is Irish whiskey, all Ireland, ge- geographically speaking, but it's a wee nod to just the fact that it's being made in the north of the Ireland. Yeah, you know, of course, the north of the island, obviously. You know, um, yeah. Because, uh, like it or not, like you say, you know, I know Northern Ireland's only like 100 years old, but I, I go down south all the time to Dublin and all. There is a different vibe. Like, I love the Nor- I love Northern Ireland. Yeah. You know, even the right down there, like, um, you know, the wee bakeries and, you know, like even the, the, the petrol stations. They're just different. They're yeah, 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 absolutely. Very yeah. And very even unique. Produce, about, like, produce, yeah. like you said, like, um, Produce wise, if you get you know like a full like an Ulster Frey, like there's there's an identity yeah. to a lot of stuff in the north that is that's a little bit different in the south, and that's, th- that's the same thing yeah. in different parts of the south as well. Like if you go from one county on the yeah. east coast of Ireland to the west coast, they have their own identities as well. Mm-hmm. So it makes only sense that the north would have its own identity within that whole Ireland. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of identity you know so that's what the whiskey's really about like it is about just sort of we nod to that shared heritage I love it bro yeah. you're an absolute legend it was funny because my mate that's what I was going to say to you when my mate went to China he said to me um, a, a complete difference in culture like you said again they would call them out um, their, his bosses would call them and they would all be drinking neat whiskey or neat drinks Yeah. but you're not allowed to get drunk if you oh, get okay. drunk, yeah, you yeah. shame yourself. Yeah, you have yeah. to go home. They'd call a taxi. You know, you start acting all yeah, yeah, they say, yeah. go home, and they'd yeah. call you. Yeah, and and um, you can only really get the promotions when you stay all night and handle it yeah. and talk with them. Yeah, and yeah. then at the end of the night, then, you know, they give you the promotion or whatever. And I love that because I thought... Well, it's a good... I, I, mean, it, it, I mean, obviously, like, HR and most companies wouldn't be, like, heavily supportive of going out and a drink on an interview. But it's a pretty good way of finding out <laughs> exactly. who, you're really, who you're really working with and for. Exactly. If you can sit and have a drink... Course. And go into that, you know, next level of your personality and still be super sound. Yeah, it's know? true. Because, like you said, when we're having that smoke upstairs, and you said about um, there's different types of people with alcohol... Yeah. And some people, like, they're just... And I said to myself, 100%, or some people, they take a bit and then they act all fucking... Yeah, they just go. And then they keep doing it. Yeah, and it's you know, they never... fascinating because, yet yeah, I could drink... I could drink... And I could drink a whole bottle and be all right. Like, you know what I mean? I would yeah. be happy, but I, I don't crave it all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd like a spliff and a wee, maybe a wee bit of whiskey. Yeah. But I don't want to get drunk. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm not after that drunk feeling. Like, I don't know. It's different. Yeah. But, no, but you yeah. definitely got to know your... You got to know your drug and... and do it responsibly no matter yeah. what it is just make sure you enjoy it and it's, it's not detrimental to you or your friends or your family you yeah. know bro um, I can't believe you made this whiskey bro because it's not just a normal whiskey it's like a fucking there's, and I can tell your t- your tattoo artistness is involved in it to even right down to the fucking the sides of it and yeah no, you know definitely. It, like I can tell like it's made by a creative guy well, that was it. I mean, and there was no real, there was no real like expense spared in the process. It was just about how yeah. can I make this look the super best. cool? And I mean, it actually, it won the Irish Whiskey Award for the best designed whiskey. Yeah, which is sort of halfway there. Yeah, I haven't entered the whiskey itself into anything, but um, bro, you should because I'm going to yeah, tell you this now. Do. I, I've drank most Johnny Walker whiskeys. Like literally, I've. I've class myself as like a whiskey connoisseur I love the whiskies and I don't really like Irish whiskies mm. I like scotch whiskey but that there bro I drink all of that oh good literally good what I might drink it tonight might get a couple of spliffs down me and just sit there swigging <laughs> yeah, 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 but it's yeah. really special yeah. bro it's absolutely delicious and I love the name as well because it's it's a homage to White Dragon yeah it does and even the whole there is a bit of a mismatch of mismatch of um, identities with it because obviously it's a whiskey product from you know Ireland it's got a bourbon look to yeah, it. Yeah. A Amer- very Americana look to yes. it. Yes. And then it's also got a very... Ja- it's basically a reflection of everything that I'm into. Yes. And I think that that's why it's successful is because anytime I talk to anyone in the industry about, you know, either sort, you know, stocking it or whatever, it's it's a very genuine product. Yeah. Because it's not done by committee. It's not designed to suit a certain thing. It's just, it is exactly what it is. And the backstory of it's very genuine. 
I love it, bro. It's too g up, bro. You're a fucking legend. And then what's this here? The Spice Ginger Cola. Yeah, Spice Ginger Cola. And this is Dragon's Claw as well. Yeah, that was a wee sort of project on the side. It's, I think it's pretty nice. I would, although it's very sugary. We had we talked about this. It's not good for you. Yep, carbonated water, sugar, caramel. Yeah. What are these here? These are the numbers. Oh, why they're from Buzz Lightyear? They're the um. They're the leans again, very sugary, bro. I wouldn't be. What's it for? But they, they get you high, you know. You'd make you. There's like loads of THC in them. What do you mean? You drink them? In. Yeah, no, but not like that. No, you're not like, drink it. No, no, put no. it in syrup. Like you'd mix it in with this. You'd pour so that this. So this is this is how much THC is in it? I don't know. Three hundred and thirty mils in, in milligrams in that bottle. Yes. So that's what you would do then. You put what did you say out there? You can chill, lean. Uh, the ball's like, put it in me. <laughs> Pop, <laughs> put it in me. <laughs> I don't like the lean. Too sugary, bro. And like you said, this is like quite sugary. And then you Candy pour that in. I've never actually seen these before. Yeah, they're from Buzz Lightyear. Chill lean. They're the boys. And then so you can just literally put that into a drink and you're getting the yeah. same way like an edible, but you're just drinking it? Yes. Is it because you're drinking it? Is it faster acting? I don't think so. I think it's just pretty same much the same. same thing. I don't, like, I don't like sugary drinks. I'm against it. Like, I like my whiskey. Yeah, me. yeah. You know, I like me, um, I drink water, whiskey, I like black coffee, you yeah. know what I mean? I hate sugar in my drinks, bro. Hate sugar. I'd never have no sugar in my coffees or my teas or nothing. Do you have sugar in your tea or coffee? No. Hate it. I used to when I was young. Once you take it out and you go back to it, it's absolutely yeah, horrible. Yeah, it's disgusting. It tastes like there's worms in the fucking drink or something. So that, just, that's 330 milligrams. Yeah. Would that you put that whole thing in your drink? Of course, but I mean again, of course he would. But, but, I, but I wouldn't. But I wouldn't put them in because I hate sugar yeah. in drinks. But that's I don't that, even really like because we're chatting. That's the same amount of milligrams as a full Wonka bar. Yes, not that one, but yes. the big one. Yeah. So the Wonka bars were usually three um three fifty, but then my John Sue's. That's why I said, bro, I'd need three of them to get me high. So that's why I made the yeah, John I mean, Sue's. You bar. need to put like <clears throat> if anybody watching, don't don't do that. <laughs> that's a thousand <laughs> milligrams is yeah. for the for your. Like, um, recreation, the odd time you couldn't be doing eating a thousand milligrams, yeah. No, of course not. That's why it's the yeah. John Sue bar because I remember, like... yeah, exactly. That's it because even that, if that's a lot, yeah. But that's I'm... the thing about weed, though. Like, how, how much milligrams, something milligrams in a joint, yeah. It's, it's microgram, I think the MG means mi micrograms okay. or something or whatever. But, um, to me, bro, this is what it is. It's like, um, like you said. Humans are fascinating, you know, our bodies um, develop, um, you know, a tolerance to whatever we yeah, put yeah. it through. <coughs> so if we are eating loads of bullshit, it's going to like try and find a way to yeah. can support us doing it. It's the same with smoking weed, yeah, you yeah. know, or in ingesting marijuana. So, you know, the more you take, the more it's going to take you to get you high. Like yeah. the funny thing is I don't smoke weed and get high. Yeah. You know, that concept of like I'd smoke, like I had a spliff before here, I'm not high. Yeah, yeah. It's not like I'm sat here and monged out or nothing. It doesn't, yeah, you yeah. know, I'd need to probably eat a full John Sue bar, eat two of these, you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. have a big fucking I mean, fat spliff. <laughs> yeah, that's why you never go out, never ever go out in town like the first Saturday after dry January yeah. because people who haven't drank for a month like yeah, try and just go out be. on the first two drinks and they're absolutely plastered. Yeah. So it takes a very short period of time for your tolerance level to drop. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, for the for the typical person who might take, you know, eat an edible once a month or twice a month, like you certainly that would that would do you six months. Yeah, one square. You know, one square. Because one, one square, square is essentially a quarter. That's still a lot of that yeah. Wonka bar. Yeah. That's four big squares of the big Wonka bar. I want you to have some, bro, but make sure you're not working the next. No, day. no. I mean, I have like. The 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 uh, typical edibles, the jelly ones. I think they're like two hundred mil mg's, yeah. and but it's the, it's the um, inconsistency. Yeah. Some of them you get, they're like, oh my goodness, and you're at you, you can't move. Yeah. Those other ones are like, wiring them into you like flat out. Yeah, of course. And then you're just sort of like, and you then you, it's nothing worse because then you're yeah. sort of sitting there going. Oh, I'm gonna fuse. I'm gonna tell you the truth, bro. In general, I don't like edibles at all. Wonk is different. The we the weedy wonkers they're like it's quite special. I went. Yeah. I felt like it was um we Charlie Bucket going to the. <laughs> I'm not going to yeah, yeah. Charlie I, Bucket. I, yeah, I, yeah. I walked in. Charlie Lung. I, I walked in. I walked in. There's a chef and he's there spinning all the fucking the handmade um sweets and then he's pan pulls them all and he's there chopping them up and you know that's real special and the chocolate bars like are it's all done professionally. Yeah. And I was thinking this is a different level. Not only that. They make then like 
they make these wee cakes and all at Easter. Yeah. And it like it, the the packaging even looks like better than the the best bakeries. Yeah, in Northern yeah, hundred percent. And yeah. again, I can see the Northern Ireland vibe in it. Yeah, Because yeah. it's that like it's real quality. Same with your whiskey. There's yeah, a yeah. real, real quality. Yeah. To a lot of the stuff. So are these Northern are Ireland. these made? You can't say they're made. They're made locally. Are they made in Ireland? Yeah, they're made in the magical Wonka factory. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, <laughs> in, yeah, but in Northern Ireland, yeah. you know, Tato Castle. And they don't have it, but if they've got ten um, Uyghurs with loads of fake tan on. No, no, no. The Umpa Lumpas. <laughs> yeah, the the Umpa Lumpas. No, but um, you know the way Tato factory. Is that, is that what that's referencing to there? And I. All oh, right, okay. Be. It might be. I don't know. That's the Cali cave in the back, and we shout Very out good. to them. But um. No, you know the way Tato, Tato Castle is yeah. deep in the countryside in Northern Ireland with Mr. Tato? Yeah, yeah. Same, same with the Wonka thing. factory. He lives there, a few umpa lumpas. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They whip them all out. Very good. But it is special, bro. I do. Um, and because mine was so strong, mine used to just be the the dairy, the, the, the milk, you know, the the milk chocolate. But the I remember you saying it's strong. just way too overpowering. So that's why yeah. I put the mint fudge in, but some people don't like mint chocolate, but fuck yeah. him, you know what I mean? Hey, listen, it's a means to an end. Let's okay. be honest. Whenever you're, you're, whenever you're eating edible chocolate, you're not thinking, you really are, it's like it's a means to an end. Exactly. If it tastes anyway good, it's going to be good. I'm telling you. I find them good for like long haul flights. Yeah, of course. When you just got shit to do. The last John Su bar I ate was at Christmas. I had a bottle of whiskey, full bottle of whiskey, had a John Su bar, smoked a few blunts, I was there chilling. All night long, you know. <laughs> so here. Well, I'm gonna give us a blast and see. Yeah, damn you know, right. I'll, 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 I'll document my the evening. Exactly. Bring my bring it, yeah, of course. I'm bringing the chillings for you as well. You take them. Yeah, as I think well. I actually I find I like the idea of these. Yeah. Um, they're sort of like non-threatening. I think yeah. they'd be cool for like sipping on it if I like, got all day festival yeah. or something like that. Or just sure. watch it if you wanted to binge watch a, a series or something. You know? Yeah. Do you like? That's what I wanted to ask you. Like, what, what you in the movies and all and series? Isn't oh, it? I like it, every night. I would watch at least one movie. Really? And it's, it, I it's, like that. It's a problem because I always during the day I think of so many things I could do creatively, yeah. and then when I go home I just can't wait to watch a movie. Yeah. And I would usually watch eight o'clock movie if I, if I, if I miss the eight o'clock. I don't get to bed about 10, I'll just watch one movie, but I'd like to do two movies. What was the last movie you watched? Um, I, I tend to watch the same thing over and over again. So oh. yesterday I watched, um, I'm going to get a complete mind blank here. What did I watch yesterday? I, I watched, can't remember what I, I watched yesterday. I watched a mad one yesterday, X, it was called. Have you ever watched that? No, I haven't watched X. X, it's a mad one. I, you know what I watched today? Rock, Rock City, Detroit, Detroit Rock City. Never it's like about the kids going to the Kiss concert and losing right. tickets. It's good. And what was it? What was X about? I'm trying to remember what I watched X yesterday. Is, X is fucked. X, X is, is actually fucked. quite good. It's about like um, these these young folks are shooting. Uh, they want to shoot a porno movie or something, and they go to uh, a wee farm. And is this a comedy? No, no it's right? Okay, like, it's not the one I'm thinking like a, of. This. It's like a horror. <laughs> right? And okay. then there's like um, and the farm is run by a wee old couple. Yeah, and then um, the wee old couple basically go on a rampage, start killing them all. It's fucking. That's sick, not. Right? Dude, would you typically watch horror movies? I like horror movies. Do you like? It's horrors? the only genre I do not watch. What? So I don't watch horror movies. I'll tell you why. Horror movies to me are like extremely spicy food. Right. Like the whole f- feeling it gives are you. you me, overrides bro? the pleasure of. Get the fuck! Yeah, I remember the only, the only movie I've seen. I haven't. I've never watched any horror movies. The only one I watched recently was Get Out. Love that. Was, That's more only, of a thriller. Well, it's a thriller. It, and I liked... It was yeah, it's more of a thriller. Shit out of me. Yeah. Like, his mate that was on the phone, like every he was funny, so it sort of brought you back out of that fear. And tra- but I typically... Even that, I watched... I don't... I can't listen to it. And my wife can't watch it. So it's the sound that like, the, 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 the scares me. So I'll sit like this. Yeah. And she'll sit like this. So she'll be asking me what's happening. Yeah. And I'll be like... What? Okay, like, that's the way we watch scary movies. You're I can't funny. cope with scary movies. Um, they don't even scare me. Like, I, I know, but that's, that's... I think you've, you've got to build your tolerance up to them. That's I don't why. know. See, the mo- uh, bro, I'll tell you... The, maybe I have. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I was watching horror movies from when I was no age. Yeah, no, but horror movies, even six. our family... Like, my dad, I would say my dad was hard as fuck. Yeah. Um, I went to see Shutter Island with him. It's yeah. not a horror movie. And my dad was like, what the fuck have you brought us to watch? Like, he, he was hiding <laughs> on his thing. I'm like... 
Like, he's like, I'm away here. I'm like, no, yeah. no, no, listen, stay, stay, stay. Yeah, can horror movies freak me out. See, my granny, Betty, who was telling you about before, I was with me and her, we really clicked then. Just watching we horror loved, movies? We loved horror movies. Yeah. And I've, I've always loved horror movies. If anything as well, bro, I'm a real fucking, I'm a real, like, real, like, critique. You know what I mean? Like, if there's something not adding up in the horror movie, I'm like, that's a load of shit. <laughs> yeah. That's stupid. I, I thought that one of the key points of horror movies was like, Again, it's like spicy food. You can't be like, you know, super spicy food where you're crying and everything and then you're like questioning the flavour of the part of it because it's like no. the, the fear factor seems to be like, would, I would imagine, overwhelming right, so every I, other aspect of it. Because I'm not afraid of it then. I don't find it afraid. But yeah. I'm all into like a good story. I'll tell you one of my favourite horror movies, bro. Um, Drag Me to Hell. I did watch that one. Fucking Does the woman cr crawl up the ceiling in that? It's the it, woman. It's about the wee old woman. Yeah. And the woman. I, I did see that because my brother-in-law had bought it at the time. He had got a 3D TV. Yeah. I didn't watch the whole movie. Yeah. But we went and watched. I put the things on. And I just remember this thing. Woman crawling up the ceiling. I was like, I'm yeah. like, that's fucking yeah, freaking. Yeah. I tend to like, I love real life dramas. Right. You know, like um, Dark Water about um, DuPont. You know, civil lawsuit sort of courtroom movies. Right. Which is completely different from horror movies. No, I mean... Last, I, yeah, I, I watched the Arrival yesterday. The you seen Arrival? It? No. Arrival. Fantastic film. It's about um, a spacecraft arrives on Earth 12 of them and they're trying to communicate with this extra... It's not sci-fi, actually. It's quite a profound film. Very em emotive. Right. Um, really good film. What, is it about an alien or something it's, like that? It's about them trying to communicate. Have you guys watched Arrival? No, it's... It's all about language. Yeah. And they're trying to communicate because they, they have to give them, they're giving them this message and they can't, and different countries, are tr like Russia has theirs and they're not communicating and the whole thing breaks down. It turns out about the language is futuristic time travel. Good film. So, so I watched that yesterday. Um, can't remember what the other one I watched was. But yeah, sort of movies that sort of like make you th think a wee bit almost, I guess. Yeah. But again, movies are just another, not to bring us right back to the whole CIA thing, they're just another form of propaganda. No, of course, you but, know. Uh, yeah, I don't know, like, uh, I'd say one of my all-time favourite guys when it comes to cinema as well is Mel Gibson. Mm. I think Mel Gibson's too G'd up, bro. From Braveheart, goes right back to Braveheart. Yeah. And did you see The Passion of the Christ? Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's, it, it was, I remember watching that at the time, and if you're of any sort of roots of, in faith at all that's a very that's a very deep um, yeah. emotional film to watch yeah. I remember it, even though I wasn't there and that wasn't what I was into at the time it's it hard to not yeah, like, it's get still completely gripped it's very course. visceral yeah. did you watch Apocalypto Apoc by him Apocalypto was unreal it's, it's my really one film. of my all time favourite films yeah. again I love Apocalypto yeah. um, The Patriot was a bit weird and all and that. did you ever see Hacksaw Ridge that he done as well yeah it's a good film F yeah. fascinating yeah. Bro. I love him and I love Tarantino yeah. You know, like Django. That's probably one of my all-time... I, I, I actually got off Quentin Tarantino on, on the back of Django. What? You didn't like Django? No. What are you talking about? So I hated The Hateful Eight. I, did, I really didn't like well, that. Well, Hateful Eight, I think they come just after Django. Yeah, I think so. It was, it was just, I was sick of Quentin Tarantino's dialogue by the time. But you can't tell me you didn't like Django. I didn't like Django. Django's probably the best... I'll tell, you why, right? I'll tell you why, right? I'll tell you why, right? I'll tell you why I didn't like Django. Obviously, the excessive use of the n-word yeah i didn't think that it was it was doing any good like i know i re seen interviews where um they were talking about how they're trying to diffuse it the overuse of it and yeah. like, and trying to diffuse it by overusing it i just sort of felt at the time actually at the time a week earlier 12 years of slave had came out yes and I, I don't know whether the two movies haven't seen them back to back yeah with two very very different i just i just felt like and of course, like this is just you my felt opinion. Like I'm not was mocking enough. it away, even I, or something. I don't. Not just the face value of it, yeah. right? Not just the face value of using it uh, in a in a exploitative way yeah. of just using it for yeah. shock value. I don't mean that because obviously Quentin Tarantino, there's he, he's a lot more intelligent than that, yeah. and certainly not the next level of it being diffused. I actually felt a, a, the deepest that I could understand. I just felt like it didn't it didn't have any it didn't bring value. It didn't highlight anything. Yeah. My, I don't know. For me, I just felt a wee bit like uh, just uncomfortable with the use of it yeah I don't know that was just my personal opinion interesting the, 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 the elements of the film I really did like yeah you know if you if you look at and I noticed a trend I guess with Quentin Tarantino from my, my opinion that I noticed if you look at Inglourious Bastards 
that whole film is almost like the revenge story at the end. Mm-hmm. Finally, what happens if you could actually have killed Hitler? The same yeah. way with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. Where it's like, what happened if uh, they stopped trying to get yeah. murdered? And Django maybe falls into that same thing. Like yeah. what happens when the tides are turning and you finally do get revenge? In yeah. that respect, I enjoyed the film. Yeah. To see that, you know, a sort of porn character get his comeuppance. Yes. But stepping back from the use of the language, I just sort of thought, I don't know if this is doing any good. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm not qualified. No, to I say understand because I remember funny. talking with OJ about it and OJ, you know, he would say like he, you know, he hates the use of that word as well. And I remember saying, what about like in Django then, you know, yeah. like Quentin Tarantino, he's writing a script, but he's writing it a hundred times in the script and he's asking, um, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio to say it over and over again. And does it become okay then just because it's a film? Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't understand like the morality of it. You know, it's either all right or it's not. And like you said, if they're going to depict it, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But with me, the reason why I love Django so much, bro, as well, was because like the original Django was a white guy. Oh, right, okay. Did I didn't you know, I didn't know, know there was an original too. In fact, funny enough, the original Django is actually in Django. And oh, he's right. at the scene. Um, he walks over and Jamie Lee Fox sits down beside him at the bar. And he goes, um, what's your name? And he goes, Django. The D's silent. And then the other, the original Django goes, yeah, I know. All oh, right, okay. And the reason, and the reason he says, cool. yeah, I know, is because that's what he used to say in the original Django yeah, right, show. Okay. He'd say, Django, the D's silent. Right, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So it was a wee homage to the yeah. old Django. And even the song, Django, that was from the original, right, from like know. the 70s. Know. But he was a white guy, yeah. the original Django. But obviously Quentin Tarantino then done that. But I loved that concept that they made him. And then guess who was, the, was supposed to be the original Django? Will Smith. Now, that would have been terrible. Well, it would have been a different movie. It would have been, you know, have been like, shocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have been like Wild Wild West yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, Jimmy Lee Fox was the perfect guy yeah. for his acting, bro. Because I love Jimmy Lee Fox. Did you see? I first watched him in um, Redemption. Did you ever see Redemption? About Tookie Williams. No. Do you know who Tookie Williams is? No. Arnold Schwarzenegger killed him. You what, never... do you, when, when, how, what do you mean he killed him? He, well, it, you can laugh all you want, but it's real. <laughs> That's disgusting, real? bro. Do you know the story uh, of Snoop Dogg spoke out about it as well. He said, fuck Schwarzenegger, man. Fuck him and all. Have you not seen this, bro? No. So who's Tookie this? Williams was um, one of the founders of the Crips. T-O. Yeah, T-O-O-K-I-E. Tookie Williams. And Arnie there killed him. Well, uh, he was the, what do you call it? Arnie, like, 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 Arnie was the governor of California at the time, and he ordered his death. He was on death row. But this guy who was on death row, he had, he had won a Nobel Peace Prize, and he wrote about 20 anti-gang books, and came out as one of the most, he was a G. He was the, one of the most militant guys going. Spoke about um, the dangers of gang <coughs> culture and telling kids to come away from gang culture. Won a Nobel Peace Prize oh. while he was on death row. And, I didn't um, know that. and then um, th- they were trying to get him acquitted, you know, and get him uh, took off yeah. death row. And um, Jamie Lee Fox done a movie about him, trying to show what he's done and how he won the Nobel Peace Prize. And yeah. he's tried to, you know, dissolve the Crips and everything. But then Arnold Schwarzenegger became. Um, High governor? The governor. And he said, I want to show that I'm strong on capital punishment. So he ordered his death. So what a, what a scumbag. Yeah. Never, I have to check out it. You will, bro. It was one of my favourites as well. But again, that was Jimmy Lee Fox. Like, I love Jimmy Fox, bro. He's sick. Jimmy Lee Fox. Uh, that's different. Yeah, Jimmy, no, it is Jimmy. Jimmy Fox. Jimmy yeah, Fox. Jimmy Fox. Who's Jimmy Lee Fox? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you're no, laughing. Jimmy Lee, not like a, that's the woman. Jimmy Lee's the woman. Yeah, Jimmy She's Lee. A, yeah, I always yeah. get mixed up. Jamie Jimmy Fox. Jimmy Lee. Bro, yeah. too sick. But Django was special to me for that, bro. Yeah. That's what I loved about it, that... um. You know, because see the little mermaid and all that, and there's the black girl in it and all. I think that's mental. You with me? Like, you know, and they always this seem to be... This is where it's like, like, the fucking, like, just for the word for our sponsors. <laughs> yeah. And I've seen, like, um, the Netflix are making a new Cleopatra. I've seen about that now, and, the, 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 like, Cleopatra's black in it. Yeah. And then there's, like, a load of Egyptians saying, like, we're not having that. And sure they weren't, like, from, like, South Africa and all. There was loads of debates on it, you know? Loads. Yeah, that... that I've... That obviously Disney tends to be in the firing line um, for that. Um, God, you have to tread really carefully. Yeah, that woke culture, Disney I guess, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know, I think I, I need to be really careful how, how I say this. Um, it's all right, bro. I've done a U-turn on this actually. Yeah. Um, 
going to Disney movies with the kids and sort of seeing things and saying like things like, is that really necessary? Mostly from like, um, it was a Buzz Lightyear film actually right. that, I that I'd seen, seen. and in it the the couple are women, right? Now, I have like I'm very liberal. I have no, I don't believe in anything enough yeah. to, to. It's everyone has their it. yeah. own freedom to live how they want to feel. But sometimes in a, when you're sitting with your kids in a movie, you're just like, oh, not here. I not know. in this little thing because yeah. it's like I have to now on the drive home be asked about this right so it's just like it's a bit you know now that's a petty in myself nah, it just shows you the privilege that I have where that annoys me when nah, that's someone's it's not struggle. though because but, again it, that's not part of the fucking yeah, Buzz Lightyear but, story well so you know why, why I've done a U-turn and this is I was chatting to one of my clients about this um, at the time I used to think that way uh, and then one of my clients was in with me recently and his son is gay, that's kind of as being gay. And they're very young. And I think they're about, I think they're eleven or twelve. And obviously, you know, I was thinking eleven, twelve, that's really young. Like how do you know when you're eleven or twelve? And the person um said because I you know, I think of that personally as like if is being attracted to someone of the same sex. So yeah. then obviously it's a sexual feeling. And at twelve you don't really have sexual feelings. Yeah. So it's a bit premature. Yeah. And then he was telling me uh, that actually that's quite Typical at that age, you would, and it's not a sexual thing. Yeah. And actually, it comes. It's even f- even if they can be brought up, you know, mother and father in a heterosexual relationship. Whenever they're watching cartoons with um, heterosexual parents and everything, they don't see themselves. They can't fit themselves into that um, yeah. scenario. At a young age, that creates confusion already. Right? Yeah. So whenever my customer was telling me, I'm like, holy shit. So whenever a kid's sitting at a Disney movie and they see a same-sex um, couple, yeah. they're able to, re- they're actually able to relate to that. And it's actually made me change my mind a lot about that because that, I think for kids, it's really important to be represented um, in things, right? Now, obviously, the flip side is that is, well, like, if monkey see, monkey do, but I actually think from that, it's changed my view. And, uh, and to sort of draw a parallel, I guess, a little bit, is that my sister's married a Nigerian guy. Yeah. So my nephews are mixed race but whenever we have Halloween you know the characters like Black Panther um, characters like the new uh, Asian Marvel superhero that gives kids from different cultural backgrounds an opportunity to really like you know identify with characters right yeah. so I just I, I mean I'm, I've need, I, this is my own thinking by the way I'm not educated or re- read up enough but I guess for young kids that feel that way Disney is p- probably progressive in that they're giving them representation um, through same sex relationships. Yeah. I think. I don't know. This is thought. Yeah, I'm against it, bro. All of it. <laughs> the, it's all devil Marches shit. Marches clean off the head of the flat It's all devil <laughs> shit, bro. Babylon. <laughs> Babylon the Babylon pagans. <laughs> nah, yeah. what I think is. I was like tip to a trepidation yeah, leader, trying it. to like carefully like two I had words. to finish. I was... um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think that everything in life is very, you know, it's easy to form opinions uh, abstractly. Yeah. I think that once you're thrust into the reality of it, I think like if you look at segregation here, mm-hmm. um, between Protestant and Catholics, you know, if you grew up in an area that's quite segregated, Protestant area, Catholic mm-hmm. area, the lack of interaction, the lack of human experience um, creates in your own head a lot of barriers. And I think that whenever you actually meet someone from the opposite community, somebody from a different culture, someone from a different race, someone with different sexuality, and uh, certainly if they become a family member, yeah, it's it completely opens up and challenges those things that you that you've built up. And it's certainly not a case I think of right or wrong. It's things that you're just culturally saturated in, um, through your family and upbringing. And I think it's only through um, interacting with people that you 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 grow. And certainly, I think ideas change when they become closer to home. Yeah. And I think that that guy is a really good friend of mine. And it was very easy for me with two boys sit there and go, oh, God, this is a real, this is a real inconvenience to me that, yeah. that there's a lesbian couple in a Disney movie. And now I'm just like, you know, somewhere there's a, a young girl or a young guy sitting there who's, cha- you know, questioning sexuality and they're watching that and they're going, Whew, I'm normal and I could fit into this whole thing. Yeah. Obviously, you have a very different viewpoint on that. No, it's not really. Like, I, I get it. Listen, I'm not anti. This is what the thing that I find funny is this, though. You know, if you were to watch TV, like, you know when you watch TV or watch um, TV shows and all, I remember even saying to my daughter, like, what do you think the percentage of gay people is in the, you know, in society? 
And you know what most kids do this. Ask your kids, what do you think the percentage of gay people is in society? You will be shocked at the answer. They all say 50%. Sixty percent, seventy percent of people. This is what the kids are saying. Yeah. Do you know why that is? Because that's what the TV's representation, equally, equally representation of society yeah, is. Yeah. What it's showing yeah. them that yeah. seventy, eighty percent of the world is all gay. Like ninety percent of it's all gay. So this is what I'm saying. Like I don't yeah. need to. Like this is the problem. You know, gay, the, the gayness. It was always there, or whatever. That's cool. But now it's like everyone's gay. Like every TV show, I can't watch a series now without the. Sure, I watched The Last of Us, and they literally put in two episodes that was just promoting gayness. One was a full gay couple relationship that had no even real relevance to the storyline. Yeah. No relevance at all. It was just here's a gay couple. You all better accept that. You yeah. with me? And then, the, then they've done the same with the lesbian episode. And again, it had no relevance to the story at all. It was gay couple, lesbian couple, deal with it. And then back to the story. And I'm thinking, for fuck's sake, I remember watching Spartacus. Remember Spartacus? Yeah, yeah. And I even defended the gayness in the first episode. I said, no, in the first season. I said, they're all slaves. <laughs> I defended the gayness. <laughs> Because what I said was that. Just like, just removing so many hashtags here. No, because what I was. Them. <laughs> so, is, is this, is this what, how, how many episodes are we on? Are you on now? Your 12th episode? This one, yeah. yeah this is, is, is this episode the first 11. time it's been. Like... Nah, we spoke loads about this. All right, this. okay. Yeah, loads about yeah. this. If anything, we had to blur out some stuff. Was she in Toronto? Nah, 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 she nah, would have been like, what the fuck? Get me out of here. Know, here's, yeah. here's a list of two things we can talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, Shane was and you've got about three it. chances to swear and then you're out. Do you know what? Shane actually, if you watch it, Shane wanted to talk more about Flat Earth. No. All right, I okay. was the one that kept it like relaxed. All for right, him. Okay. I didn't want to like um because he was going to America and yeah, I was yeah. scared of him getting sacrificed or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I thought yeah, yeah. I'll just leave yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me, <laughs> you know what I mean? I have to support the homeboy, like yeah. I didn't want to hot him up. Yeah. Well he went over, like, you know, but like I said, but you bro, you're you're allowed to go deep, you know what I mean? Yeah, just totally. To, but what I think about it is, is I think I supported the game. I, I, I defended it in in the original season of Spartacus because I said they're slaves. And if the fuck if Batiatus, and that's what he was called as well, Batiatus. I said if Batiatus wants to get them to do his gay shit, then it makes sense because he's like their their yeah. boss. But yeah, and what <coughs> happened when Spartacus kills Batiatus and they go out and no. Uh, Spartacus turns into some like gay fucking rights activist and he's there like that we'll have gay uh, there's loads of gays and the next thing there are all these gay like warriors are kissing each other and running off the war and I'm thinking fuck but there, off but th th that, I mean I think homosexuality was was, was <laughs> rife in Greek times that was this wasn't Greek bro this isn't Greek is it uh, Spartacus well certainly Who was historically it? speaking Spartacus was it Roman Greek? times Roman times yeah. Roman it's Roman yeah, yeah Roman the Romans. times yeah but it's definitely in Romans I think that was definitely a big no, thing it was, it's certainly not a new yeah, but um, they were making out like no. What I'm saying is that obviously Batiatis and they they were all doing that then. But when you watch it, it's just like it's mental, bro. It's yeah. just too much. And I was yeah. just thinking, Bat there's no Batius Asimus Maximus. Batius Asimus. Oh fuck, that's so, really fucked now. So I just thought though, I think in society in general, well, like I said, it's interesting because. Um, the gayness is well, like very, very heavily promoted. Tell you a funny one that I watched. Did you see Dahmer, the the monster, the series? Oh uh, yeah, I did yeah. Um, yeah. with um, what's his name in it? That the American Horror Story actor. Um, I haven't seen American. I've I've seen the Dahmer. The, the, yeah, yeah, the but series. he's yeah. it's the actor from American Horror Story. Oh right, okay. Yeah. He plays Dahmer. Did yeah. you watch all of Dahmer? I watched it all. Yeah. What did you think of it? That's a horror. Um, I, I thought like it was horror. quite. I thought it was quite interesting. I mean, at the end of it, they somehow managed to make him remotely likable. See, like, oh, it's all right. see, but that's see. But you know what I mean? <laughs> no, but it's true, bro. I Listen. just walked into your web. No, but it's the oh, agenda. Dude. Yeah, but, and this is the scary yeah, thing. It's certainly normalized a very horrific um, person. Yeah. So yeah. first of all, I thought it was a brilliant series. Yeah. Thought the cinematography and it was incredible. I thought the actors were brilliant. I thought the way they constructed the story was incredible. Yeah. There and then they had to ruin it by rolling in the gas. <laughs> no, no. Get on this, not at all. Because that was a fundamental part of the story. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it was story he talent. was a gay killer. Yeah. He was a homosexual killer who went to gay bars and picked up men, seduced them back to his house, and then killed them. Yeah. Right? And chopped them into pieces and ate them. So that was part of the story. But uh, there's three things I found fascinating about the movie or the, the series. First being 
they the show talks about how people started to capitalize off of the trauma of the victims. Oh, uh, yeah. And they made, they portrayed that in the show that it was a really bad thing to do. Yeah. You know, like the dad writing the book and all yeah. the rest of it and all this and people then making like dammer comic books about superhero dammer and all yeah. this. But yet the, the the show done the exact same thing. The show never contacted any of the victims' families or yeah, let yeah. them know that they were making this Netflix, you know, show. So it's like yeah. they're sort of saying it's okay to profit off this as long as you're the world's biggest media outlet. Yeah. yeah. You know, but anyone else wanting to profit, it's terrible. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. They're profitizing off of the trauma of these real life victims who were brutally murdered and eaten yeah. by this cannibal. But then second of all that I found it funny was like you said about the gays. Get on this. Netflix originally released Dahmer with the LGBTQ plus um tag. Oh, so it was in that category. It was in that category, yeah, yeah. which it damn right should be. It's about a, It's one of the most um, famous homosexuals of all time. Jeffrey Dahmer is one of the most famous homosexuals of all time, right? So he should be in the LGBTQ plus. I think Elton John maybe a bit more. Famous. Elton John maybe, but yeah. da Dahmer's up Infamous. there. Infamous. He's definitely yeah, up there, yeah, bro. Yeah. I mean, and then and he's like become like a. Like I said, a, a celebrated, even worshipped figure in, yeah. in in culture. There's even cartoons and all that portray Jeffrey Dahmer as a wee boy and stuff. Yeah. F is for family. Well, I yeah, love so, so, so I mean, the serial killer thing is have serial killers always end up. There's a massive like fan base around that and become like a cult yeah. following for serial killers yes. and glorification. Yeah, it's in the tattoo scene all the time. Yeah. like I see people getting portraits of serial killers and you're like fuck off honestly like, it's it's not just like it's really common yeah. for people to get portraits it was the same whenever um, the Escobar like uh, all those different TV shows came out like yes, um, Pablo, Pablo and all and and so people were getting portraits of Pablo Escobar and you sort yeah. of go like well he's yeah. still like like pretty a horrific life. crime lord like I mean yeah. it would have been walking around yeah. with like he would sacrifice like, he would, he would yeah, say go and kill a whole family of kids away. kill kids yeah. and women but and there everything. is there's an oversimplification um, and glorification of yes pretty, pr you know pretty evil people yeah. you know and especially in, in tattoos it happens all the time I never understand it you know even even getting tattoos of any celebrity because you just don't know who that person, who is, person behind, is of course behind the you know yeah. behind the character the play yeah. you know well so well, the funny thing was about that Netflix released the series with the LGBT plus yeah. thing on and they were outraged the community said how dare you portray us in this light and all yeah. and they, they there was so much outrage that Netflix were forced to remove that from the yeah. the tags so I thought that was interesting I thought oh right you know that's a bit weird but my wee sister she was like no I think they should have removed it. Because um, LGBT is only to promote it in a positive light. Yeah. And I was thinking, fuck yeah. off. If he's one of the biggest fucking serial killers in history and he was a homosexual, that was part of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I get that because, like, although I, to, to sort of counter your argument, Hitler was a vegan. I mean, I wouldn't put him in the cookery section. Yeah, but... <laughs> you know I mean? no, but, but hold on. <laughs> but is... But if 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 he was um, based around like if it, all his politics started in the cookery fucking yeah, yeah, things, you know, yeah. do you understand yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like Jeffrey Dahmer, yeah. it wasn't just that he was gay. That wasn't like a sub part of the story. He was going to gay bars, seducing yeah. gay men, saying, "Let me take photos of you sexually," under the premise that he was having sex with him. This yeah. is all part of the gay culture. Yeah. So surely that is that, that falls under yeah, the LGBT. Yeah, to be honest, I don't, I don't really know what like the an LGBT title for a movie is. Exactly. I, 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 I'm, I'm guessing it's, I'm guessing it's quite a broad. Um, if the story's about that, you know. Yeah, that well, be it positive or negative, I guess it sort of falls in that category. Yeah, um, I think it's all positive because that proved it. So I thought that was fascinating. And then the last thing that I thought was weird about it was that it was created by Ryan Murphy. And Ryan Murphy is the same guy who makes American Horror Story. Right, okay. Now, I'm guessing you haven't watched them. because No, you're but I'm, the I'm, familiar with, I'm familiar with the Now, I've thing. watched every single American Horror Story. And yeah. I find them all quite fascinating because they are all based on truth. Yeah. They're all based on real-life characters and, and um, murderers and um, events and conspiracy theories. So all of them. It's fascinating. Yeah. And um, what I realized was is, though, they put them on a pedestal to be worshipped and admired. Yeah. these killers and American Horror Story does it more than anyone you know even like the Night Stalker and stuff that turn him into this sort of like godlike character yeah, yeah. who even transcends death 
and he comes back as a ghost and he'll be there forever, like some sort of godlike character. Yeah. And I'm thinking people can't see that these show creators are literally worshipping these real life serial killers yeah. and putting them on a pedestal. And that's what the Dammer series was. And it was very self aware that it would do this and attract these types of fanatics. Yeah. So again, the agenda was well, rife. Yeah. Rife. You know, obviously, media, modern day media certainly um, capitalizes and finds currency in that. But actually, if you look historically speaking, when there was public hangings, I mean, you, you simply couldn't have, you, you, it was sold out, you couldn't have got near it. Mm -hmm. um, executions of any nature, it was mm -hmm. always like everyone went to it and it was yeah. like a big, massive day out. I think the human nature is like the macabre, we're just, and that's why horror movies are a thing in itself, yeah. you know, and it's, it's probably like, maybe I'm just too much of a sensitive demeanor to watch horror movies. But yeah, I think that, I don't know. Like it is, it's chicken and chicken and egg with these things. I don't know whether they're creating the 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 environment. You know, they're creating uh, the the type of consumer or to watch this type of thing, or that's really what the consumer wants. Yeah. Because it seems like this since Netflix ever came out, it started off and it had loads of really good documentaries about different things. There was ones about like you know um, climate change, different things that are about diets and sort of like. Expose type documentaries, yeah. and now it just seems to be all serial killers, exactly constantly about course, serial killers, yes, and it, it's yeah. uh, or mass shootings and uh, terrorism. I think all of these things they trigger the imagination of people, but also they're another way of creating fear and sort of like titillating, you know, uh, fear in people, and sort of another way of control. Yeah, That's what yeah. I think. Because if, if you watch that Dahmer, I remember watching Dahmer and walking home one night and actually just shit myself. Mm -hmm. Like, do you know what I mean? I had to walk down this wee shortcut and I was like, oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely getting attacked here. And you know I mean? dragged into the bushes. Oh, and it's like, well, you're not. You're in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. But like, it does, uh, you know, it puts that, it, it does put that into people. You do know, you and I don't know whether it's, like, wh why, do you, why do you watch horror movies? Like, does it, but you said like, your tolerance level now doesn't even scare you. Yeah, but. You're just like, you're actually sitting there like, Critiquing it with the, the glasses yeah. in, and it was like, no, just so, like the way that scene was shot. So I'm quite logical, me. Yeah. So when I watch, I started watching horror movies when I was a wee kid. I'm yeah. talking too young, shouldn't have been shouldn't watching have been. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about yeah. seven and all, yeah. six, seven, watching Freddy Krueger. It, um, no, it was the only one I couldn't watch it because I hate the clowns. You with yeah. me? But I watched like Chucky and all, and Friday the Thirteenth. But I always thought this. I thought Jason. Like, um, you know, um, Michael Myers, too slow, just walks everywhere. You just literally could run, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 13-year-old, I'm mugging him yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, so I thought, fuck him. And then I thought, Chucky, yeah, yeah. baseball bat, so yeah, Chucky sure, Ryder, right. just yeah, yeah. smashing the bits. Yeah. He's a big bit of plastic. It's yeah. not scary to me. Yeah, yeah. Freddy Krueger, bro. Yeah. Everyone has to go to sleep. He's in your fucking dreams. It's too much for me. Oh, yeah. freak me yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it kept me... And there's a concept... So I like concepts, you know what I mean? So, something that can scare you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the thought of like, shit, you do have nightmares. Imagine there's a guy who's in your fucking nightmare and he cut you in your nightmare and you're really there. And all. That shit kept me up, you know? Yeah. So I did like it. Like so there's certain like, and uh, you know, I don't know. It's like, I like good concepts. Yeah. You with me? So that's why I'm a bit, that's why I hate cinema nowadays. I'm a freak because I love, I love movies, but modern cinema, is like driving me mental. There's no good movies really anymore. I'm struggling. Yeah, to find it is a hard. Good movie. I, I, because I would be the same, you know, plot concept, but not in horror movies and other movies. And yeah. Movies like Interstellar. Love Interstellar. Movies, like, I was um, Tenant was a wee bit like a bridge too far. I found it quite hard to sort of you know hold on the reins. I just gave up and enjoyed the movie. Yeah. So I do like those type of movies. Yeah. Um, you're right. They're few and far between. But that's the, because the younger generation, like they don't have the simply don't have the brain capacity or the the attention span yeah. to invest into that. Yeah. You know, if you're a 14, 15 year old and you spend all your time watching reels. Yes. Like, how are you ever going to sit down and sit and watch a classic you yeah. know, with a long drawn out plot? Yeah. Of you know, course. so I think cin cinema is definitely dead. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. I I love the cinema. I used to go to the cinema. Every like there was many times I'd have done three shows in one back to back, boom boom boom. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, hot nuts for breakfast, hot dogs for lunch, and like you know like all day long, and sometimes like every film I'd have went and seen the cinema, of course, all the time, obviously. And now it's like it's just not worth it. You know, yeah. there's there's just not as much good stuff, bro. I and to be honest, if, if once you go to the cinema, it's a bigger investment into the quality of, course, of a film, of course. So I've seen stuff like that's just been streamed, and I've I've really enjoyed that. 
but I, I wouldn't have enjoyed it in the cinema. I'm enjoying it because yes, I'm just it's just sticking on a Wednesday night. Yes, you know, of course, investing a Friday night into a good film in the cinema, it's just it's not yeah, it's not happening anymore. I know right? because there's nothing worth nothing seeing. Really, yeah. I remember like going to the cinema as a kid, bro, and it was a big thing, and I loved it. You know what I mean? And yeah, there was a lot gone into the movies. This is what I've noticed nowadays. It's like um, it is an agenda, bro, and you have to say like it's blatantly right, obvious slap bang in your face that there is an agenda here yeah. like you, the Marvel for example I loved the fucking Marvels when they started coming out you remember like Iron Man 1 and, yeah. and like Captain America and all it was fucking sick like it was, and you were like and it's connecting all the dots and I was thinking oh they're gonna bring it in soon nah it's just went to complete shit bro like yeah. it's the most embarrassing fucking shit going and like you said it's cause it's for a new generation that's for TikTok kids you know yeah. what I mean? So explosion, CGI, sweet, there you go. Doesn't even have to have a storyline. Did you watch She-Hulk? No. Bro, it was the worst fuck. I no. watched it for educational I'm, I, I, purposes. For educational purposes. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it was terrible. Yeah. Do you know what even happens? It actually makes me laugh. She, in, the, in the last episode, she stops and climbs through the camera and goes into the Marvel Studios and slaps the writers and says, you have made oh. a shit story. Yeah. And then, the, and then they were like, ah, ha, we trolled the trolls. We knew it was shit. We just made you watch a full fucking shit series. This is actually, this, this is, is happening. This has really happened, bro, innit? And then they were like, hey, revolutionary, do you think we are now? We trolled the trolls. I'm thinking, no, you didn't. You wasted everyone's time and you yeah. admitted that it was a waste of time. None of it made any sense. And you are basically, it's like, yeah. oh, bro, just, I wanted to smash. I don't really, I don't really watch... I gave up whenever the, the the Marvel franchise wrapped up nicely and we bow. My kids were that age where, like, we sort of had grown up with it. Yeah. And I think I went to see a few after that, and it was quite clear that they were just treading water. Yeah. Like, it was like it had done its thing, and then now it's just shit for the sake of shit. Yeah. And told me that critiquing thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, you can't critique Marvel movies. I can't. I go. I won't even let myself. But just after that thing wrapped up. I tend to watch older movies now, like of course. The stuff that I've watched a million times before. Yeah. All the President's Men. Yeah. Um, Bullet. Uh, French you, Connection. But why do you watch them so much? Is I it think, nostalgia? I think, comfort? I think a little bit of nostalgia. They're also really, really well done. Yeah. You know, a lot of Michael Caine movies, um, old Clint Eastwood movies. Like there, there is a sort of like lazy Sunday afternoon vibe about them. You're yeah. also like. Everything about them is it's interesting to watch them from a cinematography point of view. Yeah, but, of course. And the, but the plots are solid. Yeah. You know, they really are solid, yeah. good plots. And, and a lot of those movies are, the stuff we're watching are just really rehashed. Of course. Storylines from old yeah. movies, you know, from that The reason I like movie. watching some shit again, I've done it recently. Um, I said to my girlfriend, uh, did you watch all the American Horror Stories? And she said, I never watched the cult one. It was crap. It was about Donald Trump or something. And I said, no, I watched it all. It's actually really good. And then I said, but I hadn't watched it in like three years, four years. Yep. So I said, let's watch it again. I think you'll enjoy it. The next thing we binge watched it all. And she said, that was actually really good. Yep. And it was funny. She changed her perspective of it. She said she thought it was really good. And mine changed as well. I thought oh, it wasn't as good as I remembered because I'm analyzing it again. Secondly, even though I forgot most of the, like you said, I'm analysing it all, yeah. thinking, oh, right, I thought there was more to it than that, you know what I mean? But yeah. it's interesting how movies can do that too, you know, or series, you know? Oh, especially some, some things just don't age well. Of course. Really, really don't age well. No, it's true. I've watched some stuff of late, especially with kids, you know, let's watch this again. Yeah. You're like, fuck, this is so shit. But I'm at the time, me. it felt like it was the best thing ever. Of course. Well, well, what would you say the best series of all time is? Um, do you watch Sopranos is, was pretty... Fucking up there, like of I'm, I'm watching Band of Brothers again at the minute for like the third time. Yeah. Um, I I like watching it just to remind me of how brave and uh, men used to be. Yeah. <laughs> like if you Band watch that, like and you think, like holy shit, men used to yeah, fucking real properly thing. be men. Yeah, it's and, the old. And, you know, like life on the line. You know, everyone's in together. Um, the Sopranos was too sick. I was ahead of its Sopranos, time. Yeah, that it was really fascinating. Was. It was fantastic. Yeah. There's other ones like The Wire was good. I like yeah, the, the Wire. The Wire was good. Um, what about Breaking Bad? I, I like Breaking Bad a lot. I don't think I got fully fell into the full hype of it at the time. Right. But I did enjoy it. I watched it again and watched it. I preferred it much more the second yeah, time around. It's fascinating. Yeah. I love it. At that Breaking time, Bad. Like, it, uh, Breaking Bad was the one I think, the one series that it, maybe I don't know whether Facebook was all over, it was just coming up at the time, but it just think was the one that was hyped 
to the tits. Yeah. Like it was constant. And I just got sick and tired of every time going on Facebook being fucking very good. Yeah. People are getting tattoos of Heisenberg. Yeah. It was just constant. Where Sopranos was like back when you had to wait week to week. Of course. To really, and and yeah. from the writing perspective, they were really creating solid characters, solid story arcs. And I think like some stuff has come after the fact. It's a bit shit. I was watching House of Cards again. It's pretty good. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Um, but have you ever watched the original House of Cards? Not the American. No. The no. English one. Oh, the English one. I have watched it. Yes, I was going to say not the American one. Yeah. I watched a, an episode called, a series called The Thick of It. And that sort of put me on to the original British. Yes. Sort of the British About government. The Prime version Minister. Of it. Yeah, yeah. And that's the real one. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. I watched that before. Um, so when they said House of Cards was coming out on Netflix season one, um, and it was like, you know, saying in a few months, season one's coming out of this new show. Yeah. Um, House of Cards, I analysed, done research on it. and said it was, um, they're taking it from a three-part show yeah. that was on Channel 4 or something. Yeah. And it was all about the Prime Minister. And it was like three long movies. Was it called Yes Minister, no? No, no it was, was called, it was called House of Cards. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. yeah, it was called House of Cards. And it was day. Yeah. Like real was that like in the seventies or is it the eighties? Thatcher, Thatcher, Thatcher era, right, okay. times, the Thatcher era. Yeah, I must but watch that. Bro, actually. it's yeah. fucking deep, and that's what it's all based on. Then you know the the new one, but it's um, it's not as sinister as the English one. The yeah. English one is real sinister, and the only reason it's so good is because it's so fucking true. Oh, totally. Do you know what I yeah. mean? This is why I think this is what scares me about cinema so much, so bro, that I do believe there's like elite. Satan worshippers in it and all because there's it's all hidden in plain sight a lot of the shit that they show you in movies yeah like it really is like and it's real and they make it out like it's a Hollywood thing yeah do you know like even right down to the politics like every movie shows you politicians are liars murderers fucking rapists everything you can imagine yeah they're the scum of the fucking earth but everyone just goes along yeah what do you think that is you think it's just they, they do it just to normalize it it's like called, if, you, if you just constantly see something it loses its shock yeah and it's also um psychopaths have this thing called duping delight you know where they like to rub it in your face with oh, right, okay, yeah. like a duping delight it's yeah. as if to sort of say you know what it is now fucking deal with it you yeah. know that type of thing anyone that's clocked on to it they're sort of smiling at you, yeah. grinning at you. You know, that type of fucked up shit, like a, a form of smugness. Like, they, they are rubbing it in their yeah. faces. Like, you well, know? I, mean, I, 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 like, I probably don't try to throw myself too much into it because I certainly love movies and if you, you could end up having nowhere to go. Yeah, of course. You know. Well, listen, bro, like I said... I certainly don't read the news or watch the news or yeah, read newspapers or that. anything that says breaking or any sort of tabloid yeah. thing I just don't even bother with. Good. But movies, yeah, you certainly know... That movies, especially like you know, in during any time of war, they're always putting out war movies that are just pure propaganda. And, yeah, you know, just to try and glorify war and sort of show the military strength of nations. So I'd say that exact same format um, is the same for movies about financing, banking, education, music. It's all probably just another propaganda arm of of government. But. Yeah. Definitely, I'll just. Yeah. I think I'm just gonna keep watching them for the Course. time being. It's the same with me. <laughs> yeah. Listen, it's the same with me with fucking the flat Earth, bro. When I believe, then I don't believe in space anymore. Yeah. But that the flat mean... Earth one, I gotta have to check into. Like, I mean, I certainly. But it's it's, it's, it's none. Like I said, it's not threatening. It's not like you know, if I woke up tomorrow, it's not gonna change anything. Um, I just I still have have wrapped my head around why they're not that why. Like, sh is that not something I could definitely check? Yeah, you can definitely go and research it, bro. You yeah. can go and research it. They say the Earth is 24,000 miles in circumference. That equates to an 8-inch dip for every mile squared, right? 8 inches curvature All right, okay, yeah. for every mile squared, right? Yeah. So they say as well, if you stand on the, you know, uh, at the sea and you, you watch the shore and you see a ship, they say it disappears over the curve of the Earth. If you get a Nikon P900 camera or any type of camera with a high lens and zoom in, the ship reappears. Right, okay. Now, that it's just out lens, of sight, it's not actually yes, over the But that camera lens isn't bending around the fucking ball. Don't be sure, it's just straight. You're with me, even the yeah. word horizon means horizontal, it's flat. Yeah. And and you can watch it then on your camera disappear again that you think it's going over the surface. You get a bigger, stronger lens camera, zoom in, guess what? Reappears, bro. Yeah. My, my, my mate also as well, he used to laugh at me for a year and a half, my best mate. He used to say, you are off your nut. No. And then first he thought I was joking. And then he went, do you actually really believe this? No. And I was like, bro, listen, 
look into it. And he was going, I, can't, I don't have to look into it, it's stupid now. And then one day I clicked on him. He said he was on an airplane and he looked out and he was very high up in the airplane. And he realised the horizon was still at his eye level. And he was thinking, the horizon shouldn't be at my eye level when I'm fucking 120,000 foot off the ground. Surely, like, when you're coming away from the ball, the horizon should become lower. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And even a gyroscope and a plane. Have you guys looked into this? Are you guys, like... <laughs> So your mum is a flat earther too because she's a Christian. Yeah. See this, brother. So is there a correlation between Christianity and flat earth? Yeah, 100%. I would have thought my it was completely my dad, the difference. So I showed my dad. I showed my dad. Yeah. My dad's a Christian minister, has been yeah. for all of my life. I showed him the flat earth scriptures. My dad believes the earth's flat and I'm motionless. Because right, okay. that's, that's what it says in the Bible. It says that this, the earth will, cannot be moved talks about the four corners of the earth, the four pillars of the earth. It says the earth cannot be moved or shaken. The earth What's is fixed. What's underneath it? What's on the other side? It says the earth is fixed yeah. in position. But what is underneath it? Um, Sheol. What's, what do you mean? Hell. Oh, God. <laughs> is it? No, it's deep. It is deep, bro, because yeah. think about it as well. Like, so on the ball. Is, so we, you so know we, the we, way, we, like, the old term in, uh, of um, heaven above us and hell yeah, below yeah, yeah, yeah. us? That yeah. doesn't make sense on a ball. Where the yeah. fuck is hell then below I know, us? I know, I know. Do you understand I mean, what I mean? I, yeah, I always, that's actually, it, but this was the strange thing about it, that it was, that's whenever I, you've, when you're a kid and you think of heaven and it's in the clouds and all up there, and you think of hell and it's down there, and then, like, as you get older, you go, well, hold on, like, how... You know, there's not a devil in the middle of the earth. Flat or not, by the way. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, physically. Yeah. Um, because, obviously, I would have thought that those things are not physically, physically in this dimension. Yeah. When you die and you go through there, like, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that, but I also... Fuck knows, man. I don't know. Like, yeah. I really don't. No like, the flat, like, I mean, you hit me with a, no pun intended, a curveball there. Because flat earth is one that, like... I certainly don't discount any idea that anybody has and certainly want to hear them out. It's certainly not something I have ever really watched much of. I did yeah. I did see a, a couple of guys, it was a documentary where they were, they were taking a photograph and they had, they kept photographing it and then like, something happened and it didn't, it didn't disprove or approve what they wanted. Yeah. I just, I would say in the flat earth thing, I would be much more like, probably like, likely to support that from a scientific perspective like it's scientifically flat opposed to under the earth is hell and up above up in the clouds yeah, is heaven. And that's the part where I actually yeah. the correlation of Christianity and flat yeah. earth is actually where I start to go shit because I can't believe in it because yeah. I've already gave up on that. Yeah. So the correlation of the two course, but it would have to for me to actually start to subscribe to the notion it would have to be like what if oh, it told to get you back into all this stuff as well. But what if I told you if it wasn't just Christianity? What about uh, if I told you ancient Japan believed this as well? well yeah, Every single yeah, civilization yeah, in if, history yeah, knew if, that it if, was flat. If you bring it back down to like, because you asked her on, do I believe in God? Yeah. And I said like the nothing thing. I don't know that. I, I can't comprehend that. Yeah. I mean, because it, you know, it's not logical. There's a lot of dickheads out there, but as a as a collective, it's a pretty special yeah. thing. Do yeah. You know what I mean, of course. Um, like everything, like your eye, how it works, sound, taste, <laughs> senses, all those things. Seem very very special, and I don't think the nothingness is there. But yeah, if you t- if you break down all the construct of years of like man made religion and go down to it at a very base spiritual level of like, you know, the earth and all that type of thing, then yes, I could definitely entertain a flat Earth with that premise. And could you understand why hiding that knowledge from the general populace? And making out, saying we're on a ball and endless vacuum yeah, space. So, you understand why that is good? Because it's ha- well, not good. I mean, it's beneficial to you holding the power if you be- got the general populace believing in a complete lie. Because you know, knowledge is power. Yeah. So if everyone is. But here's where here's where I, I find it a bit difficult. If you look at American politics, yeah. which is like deeply set in religion. Yeah. The Republican Party are very religious. Um, if you look at. Um, governments in general you know there's a lot of like even the monarchy god save the queen you know in god we trust uh, on money and everything like religion is very traditional religion is woven into institutions so in that respect that you know science plays less of a role and it's the scientific community that are like right the earth round the earth round uh, then what 
I don't see why the government would have anything to lose by just sort of going, yeah, it is, it is flat, but God, but God still exists because mm-hmm. it wouldn't undermine. Yeah. So. But then again, I, 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 yeah, it's confusing because I never put Christianity and flat Earth in the same. Um, yeah. So it's not just Christianity, like I said. There's all different thing. Another thing to look at that is very that made me think, whoa, hold on, is this real? Was the Antarctic Treaty signed a year before NASA was created? And this was while America and Russia were at war with each other. Yeah. But they all signed this treaty. All the nations of the world signed this treaty that said no civilian can go um, into Antarctica. Yeah. Now, that's fascinating. So imagine, like, we were at war with each other, but we all meet up in a dark room to sign this treaty that says no one's allowed to go to Antarctica. Then you look at the United Nations logo. That literally is a map of the flat earth. There's no Antarctica on the United Nations logo. Yeah. The United Nations logo literally is a flat earth map. You know, it's fascinating, bro. Like, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely check out some look stuff into, about it. I mean, are, 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 so yeah, are you into it? Are, are you into it? I don't know. I don't think these two are. You, you said your mum is, bro. You said your mum is because she's a Christian. What do you feel about it? Right. Because she, she studies the Bible and stuff, so I was like saying what you were kind of like saying, so I wanted to, to know what she thought about it. And um, she doesn't believe in space either. Yeah, so she see, yeah, man, your mum's clued up, bro. Your mum sounds smart. OJ, what are you laughing at? I haven't even space, boy. I can't lie to you, bro. Yeah, man, that's good. So OJ, OJ's, um, o- OJ's a globalist. <laughs> and um, you're a flat earther at me, your mum. <laughs> nah, but bro, listen, the funny thing is, is this. If you try to research flat earth, you're going to be hit with... Well, of course, yeah, you're going to get non- all the feet, No, but yeah. you're also going to be hit with um, the flat earth society. Like, I don't believe in anything that they believe in. They believe in... It's actually, I believe, the flat earth society is like a it's government safe, run. Safe opposition. No, yeah, safe opposition, controlled opposition. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. The m- main guy that you would have to listen to if you would like to know real knowledge about this concept is a guy called Eric Dubay. Mm-hmm. And... Um, he he made a a book and a documentary called um two hundred proofs the earth is not a spinning ball, mm-hmm. and this isn't any new information either. These are like scientific experiments that he had, and you can do yourself, you know, and just look into even the concept of an airplane, uh, you know, a gyroscope and an airplane. Well, the uh, any pilot will tell you when an airplane goes up into the sky and then it becomes level, the gyroscope is what keeps it level in the sky. It never ever changes. When the airplane goes up, even if it's on an eight-hour track, an eight-hour track, it never has to adjust to go round this ball. Yeah. It just stays flat the whole so way. So why does somebody not, like, who has the means to, just charter a private plane and just go straight east and just keep going? Because, what, 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 what will it so, so this is what you need to understand as well. You know, um, a compass. Compass yeah. is a fascinating concept. There is no South Pole, by the way. There's one magnetic force in the Earth, and that's the North Pole. That's what a compass is. It's a fascinating phenomenon that even science or everything says there, that's why the compass always points to North, because there is a magnetic force in the North, right? So I believe the Earth is circular. You're yeah. with me, but yeah. not spherical. And that's interesting as well, because it talks in the Bible. It says uh, in Isaiah, God looks down upon the circle of the earth. And some modern Christians like say, see, there you go, it's talking about the ball. But it doesn't, because in the exact same scripture as well, it mentions, it says, God will um, curl you up like a ball and throw you away. So it doesn't. So it knows the word for the ball, but it doesn't use that. It uses circle mm. as a 2D circle. And that's what I believe. If you imagine a circle with the North Pole being the center, so east, if you keep going east, you'll just keep gradually going around in the circle. Do you understand what I mean? Now, if you wanted to go to the Antarctica, guess what would happen? International police and the army would stop you. You can laugh, bro, but go and watch anyone that's ever tried to do this. This is what happens. They get shut down and grabbed because it's because of the Antarctic Treaty. All of the governments of the world agreed to this, that you're not allowed to go to Antarctica. And if you want to, guess what? You can go on wee trips. There's wee trips yeah. you can go on and they'll take you to a wee fucking island like down near Antarctica. You with me, brother? But it's not the actual fucking thing, you know? And then you want to know, go even scarier. Look at all of the names of the islands and they are all very similar to a certain virus that we don't like to talk about. You know yeah. what I mean? Because we might get shut down. But um, they're all names of that as well and there's like Illuminati Plateau 
um, Rockefeller Plateau. These yeah, I've seen plateaus. that. The Rockefellers certainly have... Named, what, yeah, in named, Antarctica? Yeah, yeah. yeah they what have. is that? Well, that's mental. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I remember reading about the, the Rockefellers and um, the... Oh, the other family. Yeah, the um, um, Rothschilds. Rothschilds. And they, they, a lot of the stuff is down to the fact that they had the money. They had a lot of, uh, you know, expeditions. They funded a lot of expeditions. And because they funded it, like, they got the name, certain things. Um, that's one way of looking at it. Um, I don't know. Like, uh, like, like I said, I'm definitely going to check that out. Like I said, the internet, unfortunately, you know, isn't a reliable source of information when you're trying to really get the nitty gritty of stuff. A lot of ways, when you're saying make makes sense, if the if the government wanted to stop people from going to Antarctica, they certainly could, because mm-hmm. they could stop people from going five miles from outside their house, so they could course. definitely stop you going to Antarctica. Of course. Um, but I, I I would, yeah, I would just, I just again, I think the underlying thing for me is, would it would it really cause in this day and age when we know everything that is that's institutional is pro, is mostly bullshit. If it came out tomorrow that it was flat, I think you know the next day people will be straight on to watching the Kardashians anyway. But hold on, you know what I mean? Like I, I think it will come out and they go, "All oh, right, okay." But if it came out tomorrow, not just that it's flat. Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. If I'll it tell came you. out that, that above the sky is water, and that's why it looks like water, yeah. and we are literally in like an upside down fish bowl. Yeah. Like if you imagine a fish tank, they've just put a bowl. Upside. I mean, like home insurance would prices would go through the roof. That's for sure. If that came out, that would they'd be like. Uh, Frig, is there going to be a leak? The glass thing? ceiling. So is that, is that what rain is? Every now and again, it's just a pressure release? Really? Obviously not, because yeah. this is what it was. Obviously, rain comes from the fucking clouds. But right, that's why we're back to the right, Noah okay. flood again. Because right, okay. in the story of the flood, it says that the portals of heaven opened for this grand flood. Yeah. And this was the primordial waters that flooded. Yeah. But obviously, rain is just, um, you know, from the clouds and all. But it's fascinating, bro. When you go beyond that and you look, there's a Hennessy done an advert. And it's very, very creepy. You watch it. It's about um a guy who goes up and up and up and up and then he eventually just bursts into the oceans. Watch it, bro. Hennessy's yeah. advert with Doctor Picard. Uh, Hennessy. Yeah, I'll show it to you afterwards. It's sick, bro. It's a really cool advert. Listen, we could fucking talk all day, bro. Yeah. And I uh, should do. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, bro. But next time we do this, yeah, we'll we'll be able not to smoke. Drive. We'll smoke loads of weed. I'll drink loads of this, and yeah. we'll get deep into. It. You and should get like, a wee like extractor. I uh, know that's a good point. Like, what? Get away! You're again. like, no, please. Look where, uh, no, look where it went that. when we were fucking sober. <laughs> where the hell would it go for all hey? I uh, know. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> flat Earth. And that's uh, nothing with his. Uh, <laughs> bro, it was an absolute fucking pleasure, my yeah, bro. No, I really was, lo- man. Oh, and I just seen these. I wanted to show this off too. This is fucking. Yeah, you could have just drank. You could have filled it with that and filled that and drank it for sure. I should have, but uh, I would be scared of spilling some of it. You would need a wee filter. Yeah, it would take your resin clean off, that's for sure. Yeah, you'd need a wee um, funnel. Yeah, you, you definitely do. But I love this too, and I'm a leather worker, so I do love all that oh, leather. That's cool. That really is fucking amazing. I would love to tell you that was handcrafted, but that's from China. So. Yeah, listen. Yeah. I'm sure you're a Japanese artist. should have been well, that's it. It's local to me. <laughs> <laughs> Support local. <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, can you buy this as well? Can you can bet. Buy? You can bet. Um, I don't know where. You can buy it online at Copeland's Distillery's website. It's and worth I, buying, I promise you that. Yeah, this is like, there's not many of this left. The other two are sold out. Absolutely um, delicious. Yeah, you can get that on their website. Or, I, I mean, if obviously they'll be tagging each other, and you can just go on the, my and the Instagram for it, and all the links are in there. Perfect. Right, so. Bro, it's been an absolute fucking honor. Yeah, Thank man, you this has been a good crack, man, for I sure. I'm going home with a lot more stuff to check out tonight. Damn right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah. thank you. What's happening? This is John Sue.